Margie, mateys, we're here in prison! Ah, oh, wayward ones! Session 80, way to start it. All this whole adventure has led to you all being in prison! Nice! It happens. Where's, I mean, yeah, where's, we where's prison Mike when you need them? Does anybody know what I'm talking about when I say prison Mike? Of course. The office? Michael Scott? Wow. Oh. Come on, man! Oh. With the Dementors! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Last session, we 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 were in stand up with the police. You know, we stayed up with the guard, pretty much in an alleyway, with an assassin that we just could not kill. Man, I wonder why we just couldn't kill them. I uh, I wonder. Well, we had some mixed feelings. We felt that we might be able to move and save Tanit, which is uh, cost us his dad of a curse sucking venom. Uh, sorry, a soul-sucking venom um, that has rendered the father uh, in a state of uh, in-between. Um, now, others, perhaps just motivated to be too nice. They didn't want to step on each other's toes. But alas, the assassin lived. And eventually the standoff had come to an end because of the powers that the holy city has. We are not the only people that have advanced capabilities of magic. We are adventurous here in a world. We are growing, though. We are getting more and more power, and eventually you might supersede all that lies in this world. But as it stands now, there are those that are able to use talents. And may I remind you that was the demise of you all was an anti-magic field, and that actually is reaching in terms of spell level, right, you know, mechanically, uh, the anti-magic field is of a caliber, uh, this 8th level spell, that you all will eventually reach here soon. This is not going to be outside of the Next realm. level. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you are encountering magic that you are beginning to become familiar with in terms of that power. Um, in the end, we, we could have made an attempt to escape that standoff. We could have tried. And in fact, one of you has, Dirty Joe. Uh, with the symbol crumb one. So they have left and escaped. They're in hiding at the present moment. Most likely, we'll say in the frozen wood due north of here, right? Keeping a low profile. Uh, a ranger such as Dirty Joe has no issues surviving, especially in this season currently. Um, now, as far as the remainder of you, right? We said we surrendered. We got... Now, where are we? Well, we're in Fort Frostbeard. Fort Frostbeard um, has history as being this Mountain Bailey style keep, the top of a plateau hill, where it was the overwatch of the Sun Tree. They were the only sort of protection that the Sun Tree had, and they blossomed what the city became. Right. So if we talk about Flora Keep, we talk about the districts of the city, these other things, right? They never used to exist. It was only Fort Frostbeard. So this structure is very old that you're currently. It's not actually used for protection of the city any longer. It is only used to house the training of soldiers and supplies. And in times where it is the last resort, this would be used. And so it's always kind of maintained as that last resort. Well, one of the things that they do here, apparently, is this is the preliminary jail. Not that they don't have a jail underneath the Floor Keep. But may I remind you, that's a slippery slope. We keep the prisoners where you keep the treasury and you keep them in the house of the Lord. You also have to ex expect them to have infiltrations and movement against and these other things. So where you're in is basically the place that they judge you to see where you need to go from here. You could actually, and most of the people don't actually go to Flora Keep. They would go in the direction of Beelder, the capital, in jail wagons cells on these wagons that keep you and the jailer's wagon and they would take you to there but alas that doesn't exist anymore it's been brought to ruin and Alathan is lawless there's no real foundation of any sort of place that they would want to take you and risk you falling in the hands of those who would find you a friend in the villainy no they're going to keep you here and then if you are someone that they are wanting to keep you closer 
they're going to bring you into the keep. But this is the Knight's Kiss. And something that was stated a couple sessions back and reinforced was that they are not going to allow one of theirs to be imprisoned and then questioned under a zone of truth, divulge information of the whereabouts of their people and what their society and who and what they are. No, they are going to give the information as best as they can and then hope that they can be saved by one of their own. And saved is a tricky and a double-edged sword. Saved could be put to death or it could be spared. It seems that with Tolly entering into the jail underneath Fort Frostbeard, that they have been saved. And they might not be the only Knight's Kiss in Othema tonight, or early this morning. They're very powerful assassins. And for those to save Tolly, stands that they believe Tolly to still give some form of service to their goddess, to their people. Now, they are moving away from you, Costas. What they have done is they have given you an offer to save your father. This offer has been put up that also that you may need to move totally redeemable, yeah? that you may need the aid of your friends in order to accomplish this. Uh, hinting at magic and other things that we could use here. Remember, the Order of the Light does not use necromantic magic. They don't really tailor. The, the best that they kind of get into would be a resurrection if that's required, right? But they're not going to use some of these necromancy from the arcane suite at all. They would never dare do that, not in the presence of the Sun Tree, not in the presence of anything holy, not in the presence of themselves. It's cost as you've agreed. Because what your mother told you, and what Tali also reinforced, was that you would, you that, that in order to cure your father, that you would need to by making it this anti venom, is that it require the sacrifice of your own soul, the sacrifice of something that was born from them. That's a part of them. It's attached to them. It's a very fiber. You share half of what your father is. So in order to create an anti venom, you would actually have to sacrifice your own soul in order to cure. So your mother told you that you're going to stick down here. You're going to wait it out until your father passes. Because they will not allow you to sacrifice yourself for, their fa for your father. We don't know where the lady is. We also don't really know where your father is. They could be in the cathedral still, being tended to by the Order of the Light. Your mother might also be resting there, staying close as possible. This might also have what led and allowed Tali to escape without a whole lot of resistance. It's because the lady and the Royal Silver Guard might not be in the keep right now. But we just don't know the whole picture. We don't have anything. We've just been let out. They've grabbed these levers. They're walking down. They're pulling them. And they're striding. Flaunting as they move. I've not removed any of your items from inventories. I've not removed um, any of the things there. And I do this for a couple of reasons. I don't really want to drag the items back into your inventories um, if you do or if you are able to recover them. And unequipping them and unattuning them is easy enough. <laughs> you can simply just unattune and unequip them, and those effects just aren't there. So, do you have to do both to get rid of the effect, or just unequipping works? Uh, unequipping in the current state of the game should remove most of them. But if they do have an effect uh, that goes beyond, like the, I think the absorbing tattoo or a couple other things, you will have to unattune to them as well. Oh, they took tattoos as well. Uh, no, no, no. Like, no, they didn't take the tattoos. I'm using it as an example. Oh, 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 oh okay. I was, yeah. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. There's certain effects that tattoo. are kind of their, um, their, there's macros on them. So they have like these things where they go attune versus equip. Sometimes they'll go, oh, like, you know, it was just an example. I don't even know either. I don't know. But I, I did I find, you. I did find with the NPCs, like when I was just unequipping, but they were still attuned, that some of them in the macros would still, would still trigger. Okay. Everyone ready? Um, based on my time with the 
uh, monster manual, would I know a good beast for combat? Uh, a good beast for combat is a jail? Yeah, so not like gigantic. Just like maybe able to fill up the hallway if that's the biggest size. Ah, well, if you want to fill up the whole hallway and you want to have a beast that's very powerful, you're remarked by the crystal desert and the dinosaurs that lie inside. You would be able to change into an Allosaurus. Allosaurus, okay. Damn, I was hoping for a honey badger. Uh, another beast would be like a saber tooth tiger. You know, those are large, but also very powerful. Um, but you want to, if you want to keep, there is a height here. It's a semi arch. They're quite tall. Yeah. If you want to so fill as, the entirety of the whole thing, then you want to be. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to fill the hallway. Just as strong as I can get without being too big for this hallway. Okay. Well then, yeah. I mean, I would say Allosaurus, or uh, I would say a saber tooth tiger. Those are two very powerful beasts that are marked. And okay. which way is the entrance? Is it toward Costas or is it the opposite direction? <laughs> they walked past you to get to Costas. It's represented that the exit is due west. Okay. Holly went back to Costas, then began to walk back from where they came. So they went, walked to Costas, unlocked, and now are unlocking as they walk. So you'll see this one is unlocked. And the guard she killed when she came in is over here, uh, uh, west. Did not kill. Door. You just said, cr okay. said crumpled to the floor. Fair enough. Fair you enough. Don't you don't know if they're dead or not? Got to keep it PG. <laughs> but he's but he's over PG. over here. And would we know from our time in the in the jail if they had any weapons on them at all? Uh, yeah. They have a halberd usually. Um, this jailer most likely is going to have uh, a halberd. They might also have a plate armor on, right? They're frost guards, so they're going to be pretty well suited. Maybe a sword, battle okay. axe. I don't know. So, what are they? What are we saying over the mental link in this moment? There is no mental yeah, link. No mental <laughs> link. <laughs> there is no, we have no mental link. <laughs> it is nothing. Um... I think. Okay, are we giving our sh each other like eyes? What are we doing? We need to like, communicate what we're doing, like to each I other. I need everyone to roll initiatives. Okay. I knew this is gonna happen. Yeah, I just need you in stepwise. I just need you. In yep. Oh, I had a oh, bad yeah. initiative. As always. <laughs> Does that say thirty-two? Oh my yes. god. Better than mine. I have a 13 modifier. That's crazy. All right, Estrell, you're up. So, again, this is just stepwise. You can continue conversation. You can whatever. Tolly's is unlocking. Or you know what? They might be at the end of this and teleporting out of here. So. Uh, I think, yeah, Estrell will kind of looks like the eyes will follow Tolly as she goes past and then just. We turn back to what she was doing and she'll say out loud for loud enough for Costas to hear. Think twice about any decision you're about to make. And that's it. Yep. Alright, Costas. I'm just gonna walk out quick. Um So was Israel saying that to Tali or like to me? Like, to you, to Costas. <laughs> Did it have a... Was the tone very much like, I should not fight them? <laughs> tone was basically, think about what you're gonna do, because there's going to be serious ramifications to big decisions here. Can Sabretooth Tiger fit through this doorway? Uh, that doorway is five feet. The exit is five feet as well. Sabretooth and the Allosaurus would not be able to actually leave or exit these doors. Okay. I'm going to go just out of sight over here. Okay. Then I'm going to transform into a Sabretooth Tiger. All right. You're going to climb on top of the torture table. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Uh, and you're going to change shape? Into a saber-toothed tiger, yeah. Uh, I think you definitely need to come over here. <laughs> oh, I'm a big boy. <laughs> yeah, large. They were two that are large. Uh, your skill factor is off the charts, though. You said you wanted to fill the hallway. You have to be a large yeah, space yeah. to fill the hallway. I said I could go up to filling the hallway, so yeah, I'm happy with this. Although I suddenly have the urge to pet myself somehow. All right, you activate the stone in an action. You change PG. form, changing your shape into a city. I say pet. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, end turn. Check right. out this stuff. So what I saw then is... Uh, I saw um, Istriel, well, heard Istriel say something and not leave the cell, correct, Istriel? You did not leave your cell? Yep. Yep. <sighs> Kit's going to stand up. Uh, I imagine Kit would probably be on his... near, near here. Walk over to the door and... Uh, is gonna look at Israel and say, and I'll and I'll follow because I don't know where uh, where either of them are. So I guess I'm not looking at him, but just saying out loud. We got rid of her once. This is not our fight anymore, and I will reach out and shut my jail cell door. Okay. Uh, it is on a spring, so it's been propped open. So you're gonna have to grab it, make a strength check. Oh, hold on. How, oh, well, okay, that's the case then. Would I know that from being in here for a little bit? Yeah. I'll rage before I do it then. Okay, I like it. I like it. <laughs> so, I, let, so so let's say on my turn, I pulled a shut, it sprung open me, I raged because I got pissed off, and now yeah. you want a strength check? Yeah, it's a strength check. It's basically just to pull the door shut here. That's well, good that enough. wasn't so impressive. Good enough? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not incredible strength. You just gotta be weak. You imagine prisoners that might be feebled, right, would have difficulty. And it's not designed to be shut in that, ma in that manner, so you're pushing against the gears. Essentially something that would be sprung open. You're then fighting, pushing, pulling that spring back, and the, the whatever interior is in the pillar there. And you get a shut. And I'll go lay down on my bed. Okay. We'll follow. Um, decision. I'll follow step out. Getting an idea of the area. Looking at the guy across. Is he scared or sleeping? Uh, or so this is a like small human posturing. They are kind of reaching into the bars, grabbing them, looking. A little bit of a kind of a cowl on their head, keep, keep themselves warm. Very much in like wool like jammies, you know, and they're kind of looking down. They are just confused. They're looking at you as you step out. And then as you step out, they slowly turn towards theirs. And they look at you. I look right back at him. Stay inside. Um. And then I'm gonna yell out to cost this. Being a martyr is the, the only way to get this done. And uh, I'll step back inside. Okay. End my turn. All right, ending turn. Always using uh, their abilities here so you begin to pull the levers on either side these are free actions but also intera object interactions grab the levers so they pull them uh be mindful that the bars are close enough that they're rolled you can't fit really your arms through fit your hands through but you can't get all of your arms unless you're an incredibly small stature creature and then then you'd have to you'd be too small to reach up at the levers which are intentionally higher okay so they're intentionally propped pretty high to kind of reach up and grab them and pull down they require a lot of leverage and strength as well as you reach down and pull them. 
Um, you might uh, understand too as they're, as they're using this, there might be a master lever also that has to be unlocked to even pull these down. So even if you were able to get your hands upon them through the bars, you would have to first unlock the master, which it was. So, um, so yeah, they're just kind of moving as they unlock them. And they're also kind of being mindful. You notice the dodge is coming up upon them here in the corridor. So they're kind of being mindful as they're pulling them down. Come around, Istro. <clears throat> Um, action, bonus action, stretch out, <laughs> flex, <laughs> crack the neck. Crack the neck. All right, saber tooth. In that case, it looks like we're not fighting. Um, I'm going to just peek my head around the corner. <laughs> okay. What's the distance? Uh, 50 feet. I can't reach that one. Turn around. And she has a bow with her? From what you can tell, they don't really carry a whole lot of ranged weaponry. They have their cloak over them. Could be a bow underneath their cloak, around their body, but you don't know. They hide and conceal most of their stuff. <laughs> can you ready a bonus action, or can it only be an action? Nope, just an action. Um, yeah, then I'm just going to go back and stay waiting in my corner of Sabretooth. Okay. I think Cossus is just going to start, like, smelling shit. He's just like, oh, cool, I'm a Sabretooth now. <laughs> He's, he was really thinking we were going to start beating him up. Okay. Is anybody trying to escape, or is anybody taking any actions, hostility against each other? Not I. Okay. I was going to do something probably while this was happening, but not hostile. Okay. Is there anything that I need to keep initiative over? Um, You tell me. Uh, I was going to send... You said there was windows in these cells? Like, barred windows? No, there's no windows that lead out to the... You are underground right now. There's not any windows that are uh, giving you any space in your cells the outside wall so it's simply just flat stone okay the only way out would be the stairs behind her correct um yep no not gonna, not gonna. okay i'm gonna go ahead and end combat then so we can end the sorry end the initiative there and what's happening here uh as i make them down to the end of the hall they're opening all of these doors They finally get to the end. Some of them, you can hear pitter patting, running past, heading for the stairs to escape. Holly looks down the corridor. Are you coming? I think at this point, Othal had informed me about the ghost jar thing, so they get an nope. upset roar. I haven't told you about it. Oh, yes. you haven't? Mm -mm. Mm. Okay, so my character doesn't know that yet. Last chance. I would really love for you to come with me. Yeah. I can see us being great together. In so many ways. Uh, Costas has already caused enough trouble. He's just going to stay in this corner. He's he's going loaf. He's turning into a loaf. That's. After all this, if we see each other, but I don't think we will. See as they reach behind them, pulling out the cylinder. Farewell. They're going to activate the magical item and they're going to teleport away.
You hear the sounds of shouting from above, echoing down. In moments, the hallway begins to fill with guard as they're coming down in rolls, wielding their halberds, sidearms attached. They are moving down one to the one that is unconscious here, checking on them, others continuing to filter and roll down the space. While laying there, while laying there, Kit will say, there's a saber-toothed tiger around the corner there. Might want to go check on that. They are exchanging as I copy them down. All good. Hmm. You see one of the guard come around the corner here as they wrap around. See the tiger holding the halberd. Holding it and pressing it towards you. Then other guard begin to funnel around, moving past as they press themselves with their halberds, funneling into a formation. Costas, what are you doing? So Costas is going to like transform back into normal Costas, but he's going to be laying on the table in like that draw me like whenever your French girl poses. <laughs> They're not oh amused. Boy, Costas is out of his cell. Holding the halberds up to you. And hear the boot steps of the watch commander. Turn look through. Hey, what's up, remember buddy? Gave you that deal, remember? Kid? They see your gate is closed, unlike the others. <laughs> they don't say a word. They continue to move past, seeing you all laying down. Prisoners of Fort Vosbian, the holy city of Othema, by the charge of law, told by the Tauthars, and upheld by the Lady Daria the Bloodied, morning light. Remain where you are, stay in your cells, but given no quarter, violence, threats. They will not stand. You will also be given no quarter. You will be cut down. No reason for violence. <laughs> they snort. Push past. Guard funnels a little bit, keeping some distance of reach with the pole arms. It's the watchman and ringer who looks towards you, Costas, morning light. Watch commander, they were, they were, they were a, sa a saber tooth tiger, some sort of thing. Even without all of this, you still have magic. Surrender it. Now. I can't really do that. It's like kind of tied to me. Intrinsic. Um, I can, I'm happy to get back to my cell, though, if you want that. I have been under strict orders by your mother that if you are to resist, I am to do what is necessary. Oh, yeah, I'm totally fine with that. It's just, you know... The person who's freeing us was. You will surrender what has given you this magic, and you will surrender it now. Okay, fine. I pull out the silver gemstone and I show it to him. Give it to me. I think you should see something quickly. I'm going to throw it to the end of the hallway. Throw it in mere seconds. Warps into your hands. How are you doing this? How are you Zero, doing this? Zero control over it. So, you know, from here from full of shit. Some, some kind of witchcraft. Yes. Sorcery. <laughs> You're channeling magic even now. I'm a paladin. I'm not a wizard. Go to master. Gag and blind them. You see, All this? You are not free to push past. Halberd's still pointing okay. at you. They're going to throw gag. They're going to basically deafen you and blind you here in terms of conditions. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to put you in a straight jacket. <laughs> how, how the noble have fallen here. <laughs> you feel that you're thrown back into your cell, laid upon your bed here, 
confused and bewildered without any vision. The hands are also bound behind you, so you cannot remove these things, really. Can I still change shape? Can't tell you that unless you try. You have no okay. way to interact with anything. So clutch the stone in your hands, restrained behind yourself, sat upon your bed, sack on your head to blind you, and then you're given a gag of the mouth. I take no celebration of this past this morning. I'm going to shake my head from side to side. It is always troubling the duties of a watch commander and a troublesome prisoner. I'm not here now. The bell is beginning to ring. Warning of the city. Yep. Yeah, so Man, while you're down so. here wasting your time here, you know how this happened, right? You tell. You have more to be insightful of than I. Well, the assassin escaped. Maybe aided, maybe not. Who knows? Don't care, to be honest. We had gotten rid of her for you. And, uh... We're handling business and ended up in here. Now, look, there's something going on in town. All under your watch. Inept people. We said it was our criminal, but no one listened to us. Orders are orders. If this was played out differently, then perhaps there would have been a different outcome. But alas, you did not listen. What has come has happened. Kit Kit will sit up in his bed. We did not listen. Do you hear the bells out there? What do those bells mean? Enlighten me, Watch Commander. I will have no more words, prisoner. You have taken what it is you have wanted. Kit will slam his hand down. You're the one that did not listen, and now the whole town's in danger. I hope you're happy, Watch Commander. Why don't you go out there and deal with it now? I love this. This is great. <laughs> it's <pretty> cool, yeah. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> These chains, man. They all lock. Pulling levers by the guards, Watch Commander has no more words. They continue to stride out. Rosgard! Stay a moment. The Legion needs to move out. Some of the Frost Guards stay in positions of power, looking over, make sure there's no more funny business. Be careful, Frost Guard. Whoever you are, I have you never know she's coming us. back. Um, I wanted to do something right when the commander was leaving and the guards left me, um, innately cast Arcane Eye and have it follow Commander Englar. See what's happening outside. Uh, let's see. Okay. It's fine. I don't need to narratively do that. It's fine. Mm -hmm. oh, as you kind of yeah. spotted, is there, there's actually a lot of guards still in here in the corridor. Um, there are various defensive positions uh, looking on the prisoners. They're also patrolling down the corridors, so eventually you'll be able to see them. Following the watch commander out of the eye, you notice the Fort Frostbeard is put to alarm. People are grabbing soldiers, you know, their armaments, their weapons, those who stay within the fort. The towers being armed, like the different uh, siege things that would be aligned upon the walls. The watch commander mounts a horse and begins to ride out of the gates, which shut behind them as they stride for the actual fort's outer wall, which essentially is the base of that plateau as it reaches the military district. From there, a courier will give a message, uh, a courier that is moving with post haste on their horse, uh, from a relay kind of mechanism they have, essentially posting checkpoint to checkpoint to checkpoint when they move uh, very quickly, uh, noting that the word has spread, uh, either by messaging, so magical means can be that the assassin, now known as Tali of the Knight's Kiss, has escaped. 
and is in somewhere they believe to be in the city. The investigations will be taken first around the military district and the drift and pertaining to the mountainside pub, stating that that became a holdout for the attack on the city, the terrorism that they unleashed, and that they are also doubling efforts already in the Sun Tree Cathedral, which happens to be where the Lady Daria, the Bloodied, and the, the Stewardess and Tannen happen to be. So they are not in the keep. They are currently in the Sun Tree Cathedral, staying close by to the Sun Tree as much as possible, and using the Royal Silver Guard to defend that from any attack. Noting that the Sun Tree as is equal of a threat against a violent act as is the father of this, or sorry, the husband of the stewardess and the father. So it becomes necessary that the forces of what remains here uh, are in defense. They don't care really about the keep. They care about the Sun Tree. Makes sense. The watch commander is receiving this with your eye. They read the post of the courier. A damn lady. I told her! They've grown weak in their time, Leech. Sir, that's, uh, tree sounds like treason. You see, they grab the throat and the clutch. I'll tell you what treason is, boy. Shoves in. Being sent. To the desolate world that remains this land of the south. Pushed against... What is known as the field of ruin breathed upon by Barry Thune and watching all of my soldiers put to ash for simple sake of grabbing a hectare of land and building a new trench line for the glorious of That is treason. Knowing we would die in the wake. What are we going to do, Watch Commander? Much as we can do. Dispatch the 5th and 6th Watch. Put them into the drift, starting at the east side. Mountainside pub is what's ordered. Coming, looking through the doors. House to house. I will accompany first and the second. We will take the eastern gatehouse. Think if anyone has seen this assassin make way outside of the gates. Rendezvous at the cathedral to give a report to the stewardess. Yes, sir! You continue to follow the arcana? Because at this point, it won't be able to follow. It's too slow. Yeah, I was thinking it was going to happen that way. Um... How far is the eye from the sun tree? Pretty, pretty far. We're just at the gatehouse of fort, the fort itself. So the the watch commander was literally given a horse in the keep, which is this Mont Bailey keep at the perch of the plateau. They were given a horse. They then rode down. They then began to speak to a number of most likely these other lesser, not watch commanders per se, but those like quartermasters, those but in charge of these watches, right? Uh, essentially squad leaders, right? And they're given positions and what they need to do. And then now that's being relayed to the courier, which is then in charge going to write down what it is that the watchman is saying and relay this back to the stewardess. And it's basically saying, hey, at the end of this investigation, what we do here, we're just going to come back to you and then we can speak. We can speak face to face and figure out what we want to do next. So you don't hear them moving around at the gatehouse of the fort itself, right? Because they rode a horse all the way there. Your little sensor yeah. is like Trying slowly <laughs> working down the switchbacks to try to get there. And then they can hear the conversation of the courier, which is going to enlighten you to information of stuff they've already done here. Okay. But beyond that, now they're going to get on the horse. The courier is also on their horse or, you know, already. The courier is going to ride off and then the watch commander is going to breathe in intently, and then write off because they have to go do the job. Uh, why is this thing invisible? Um, I'm going to... 
I'm gonna try though as much as I can to have it just keep going through the city all the way to the cathedral as far as it can get. Um, how far? How far is it? It moves thirty feet. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that's gonna be a long time. But yeah, I mean, but it eventually. lasts an hour. It lasts. Yeah, an eventually. Hour. Yeah. Eventually, it, might, it it can't take no actions. It just moves oh thirty my feet. God. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of yeah. stuck here in prison here, so yeah, we'll be able to fast track. Where are you gonna go with it again? Uh, to the cathedral. Yeah. To the okay. So it looks like uh, to be that um, uh, Tannin is placed on a sundial, and it's been turned into a beautiful bed here, pristine on that sundial. There's numerous amounts of uh, accommodations and luxuries here. This is underneath. This is actually in. Uh, an area that many of the Order of the Light rest and and do uh, their clerical duties, uh, and very close by the Sun Tree. In fact, the Sun Tree branches and the brambles are kind of penetrate into the the room of the chamber that they're currently in. It's an off limits chamber. It's actually um, a little bit of ways under the ground here, um, and so the stewardess is there. The sensory is able to come down and begin to look, uh, but it is invisible. It is not like you know, it's like nothing can see it, right? Yeah, I, I know. I'm just, I'm yeah. trying to see if I, like, I'm not trying to go into the sentry. I'm trying to get in front of the cathedral to see if any, how many guards are there, if there are any, yeah. if there's a commotion that's happening. Yeah. I'm just trying to get a, a general view of what's going on. I don't okay. want to get in there, rise You don't want to get in there. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, so you would be able to see that there is a, a large amount of guard. They formed not barricades per se, but they've built some fortifications with wagons and other things that are mobile to position them outside of the entrance of the actual cathedral itself. They are at the ready. In terms of numbers outside, you or you remark at least, you regard at least three dozen frost guard that are currently there in position, and dozens upon dozens more in the interior. Royal Silver Guard are currently acting as commanders. Charging the Frost Guard uh, at this point, these Royal Silver Guard, which are paladins. They're very elite, similar to that of that which full is the banner of Lord Thalor. Uh, and you also regard the same Justicar Paladin is in the interior of the cathedral as you pick your eye up and look through the window. Okay. Okay. At least that's well defended. Um, yeah. As this is happening, um, I'm going to be whispering to I'm going to try this to Ishtril and I, and I know Kit is right next to me as well. I'm going to whisper in Draconic <laughs> and if no one understands me I'm going to then try to whisper in Elvish. I'm just going to try all my languages before I get to Common to see what Kit or Ishtril is picking up on so I could whisper this information to them. Uh, Elvish. After the, yeah. We could beat the after bush. The first time you, uh, you yeah. do it Kit will answer back was her back in orc no no yeah i was gonna say yeah, we could we could beat we could go straight to the punch of this our <laughs> kid is not gonna get it <laughs> it just kid, understands kid the comment getting, we go we can go right there or orc <laughs> we can go right there yeah yeah so it's very into common i'll i'll, I'll whisper it um <laughs> just, just not so smart okay <laughs> i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to teach you at least another language uh, um well, I teach you orc then. That that actually is doable. <laughs> or a better plan. Um, so I'll relay what's going on, what I'm seeing. Just basically trying to keep everyone into the loop. Uh Costas is blinded and deaf, so just gonna look at him as that's going on, shake my head, and then just Yeah, so that's basically it. But um there are guards here, right? Or yeah. I think, to be honest, uh, they're more on defense rather than offense right now. And I don't think anyone's going to find her. She is supposedly still in the city. Um, so she's still terror. We failed to do what we agreed to do as a group, and now she's still terrorizing the city, is what you're saying to Kit. Yeah. The city wanted her. They've got her. Kit will make sure this does not happen again. Kit, 
Uh, I think we're all in that same boat. Really fond of this either. Good news is we have our own bed. Bad news True is enough. we don't know what else is to come. And we're <laughs> stuck here with no equipment. I really want to do this the nice way, but yeah. Um, Hopefully, it's not too much longer. I don't. I'm all trying, up. I want to. Yeah, Kit. Kit, sorry. They took the pocket you gave me. <laughs> it's all right, Kit. Uh, we'll get it back. It's it's not completely gone. Um. I I think the ones that should go out and find her still are the ones that are sitting here, unfortunately. As much as we want to wipe our hands with this and leave it to the city. Still our problem. That is a tomorrow problem that we don't have access to at the moment today. How how do we convince them we are the answer? Well, if the bells are ringing and motion is struck, I have two ideas. It's either we do something about it ourselves right now, and we make ourselves use valuable. Or hopefully Joe or one is seeing what's happening and can help that way. Because um, it's either we break out and help like I wanted to do before. And, you know, it's better to ask for forgiveness than ask if we can do things, but... I feel like we already made that choice, and now we're here. Do we really want to double down on that? Well, I would have said no if she didn't show up here and start a commotion. I wanted to just do this because this really isn't prison to me, guys. This is more like just trying to convince the lady that we're on her side. And if this is what we got to do, we got to do that. But right. she yeah. shows up. If Holly shows up here and is making a mockery of the city, of, of us, of what's going on. Oh, she's making don't... a mockery of us. She's making a mockery of the ineptitude of these buffoons out here. Yeah, but it goes hand in hand with us because she came here and it's more like, look what you couldn't do or your decisions led to this point. We made a choice and we didn't abide by that. And this is what happened. Eh. Uh, Kit knows Kit mm -hmm. killed her. And Tali's aware that we can find her at any point we need to. Yeah. That's, can, we, um... can we poison Costas to get his mom here to talk to her? Uh, like oh the horrible treatment I receive I don't you know come see your son I don't know there's a um, there's a lot of guards there they're stationed at the sun tree I don't I don't think that would work I think we have two options first option is getting out of here which really wouldn't be too complicated but would uh, have a high likelihood of making us enemies of Othema. And the second option is to just wait it out. If we do get out, where's our stuff? It's bound to be somewhere close by. I could always attempt to use the gift to find it, track it. I think at this point it's better to 
let them fail and potentially realize they need us no matter the cost. <sighs> I'm sorry, Othala. I know that's not what you want to hear. No, it's all right. I sort of half agree with it. I know that everything can't be perfect, but um, I like to try, you know? Kit understands. You have a kind heart. We tried to help. We tried to be nice. We tried to get the cure for her husband, Casas' father. We tried to warn them of her, what she was capable of, why we were doing what we were doing. And they failed to listen. Now, meh, their problem. Until they come to their senses. You can only guide a horse to water. What? That is true. No. Horses find water themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right, Kit. Kit smart. <sighs> so, I think we just have to wait. However, I do think we should not be waiting indefinitely. I worry about DJ out there all alone. This is the perfect chance. <gasps> Kid, just think of something. Tolly was here. He sees us. She no see DJ. He stay in town. He could be looking for him. He's alone. That is true. It's just him and one. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to not include one in there. But... No, it's 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 <laughs> completely fine. It, he's basically alone. You know, it's not many of them. I, oh. If Tolly didn't bother to finish us here, she's not going to go to the trouble of tracking Joe down to kill him. It would f fit how she got Costas at first, though. And why would she stay? Maybe oh, she's Kit, Kit's head hurts now. Hard to understand what that woman is thinking. It's speculation without any access to resources. There's no mm -hmm. way for us to know. I hope DJ's okay. I have a question, Michael. Yeah. Even if I can't cast spells, right? Um, that goes for spell slots, correct? So I can't extend the spell if I wanted to. Like, what context? If, like arcane eye lasts an hour. If I spell, if I spend a second level spell slot to extend it for another hour, I can, can I do that? Even yeah. with... okay. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> as Kit is saying this to me. I'm going to keep the arcane eye up. Um, I know I don't know where Joe is. Yeah. Um, but I think what Othala is going to do is that he's going to just have the eye um, for about a couple hours or two, like three hours going off into the woods. Knowing what Joe would do and try to leave. He would just try to look for smoke, campfire, signs of Stuff like that. See if he finds 
signs of them. Okay. S slowly and surely. <laughs> yeah, as much as I can do from here. Okay. Because I can't use clairvoyance. Exactly where they are. As the hours tick by, those hours are going to turn into days. You are in a state of wondering exactly when things are going to kind of end, when they're going to change. The guard posting eventually will be light and, you know, lightened, so to speak. Yurikay and I will have no chance in finding Dirty Joe. None. Going into a wasteland of Arctic and trying to scavenge where a ranger is hiding in it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Pretty much impossible. Which is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And as we come now to two days from now, passing over two uh, separate occasions of holidays that exist either in this land, elsewhere. Those are not going to be regarded. No bells have been tolled. No death of anybody has been rang. And the guard begin to build up their presence here. And eventually the watch commander is going to appear. Watch Commander appears in front of Costas. For all the while, Costas, you have been rendered rather blind and deaf and given only reprieve during meals where guard watch you eat. It has been very jarring, difficult. And you wonder what might be making of your father. Watchmaner says no words. They unlock your gate and they open it. You are to come with me. As they finally speak. They are to take off your cowl, the sack that sits over. They remove your gag and they undo your bindings. Go. Oh, the light I can see again. Mm. Great. Nice to know I'm no longer a security risk. Let's go. <laughs> You're going to exit the jail. Everyone is going to still be there. They make no words, no motions of your release. They bring you up to the courtyard where there is a jailer's wagon ready for you. And Turin, don't resist. Can I ask where I'm going? We're heading to see your father, Costas. Thank you. I get in. You've got and lock the jailer's wagon. As you sit alone, it begins to roll down the street. Heading in the direction of the holiest of districts in this holy city on the Century Cathedral. You're going to enter in to the cathedral. At this point, Much Commander Ringler Uku is going to pass you over to the Justicar Paladin and the Royal Silver Guard that are there. They are going to put in charge of being on either side, the Justicar in front and adjacent to the left hand side. The helmet has been removed. They say no words to you.
you go downstairs. In the direction of the sundial that is protected in the, the underdwelling of the cathedral. There is dozens upon dozens of frost guard and these royal silvered knights. They are accompanying you and then stopping. But you are still on either side of two royal silvered and the Justicar Paladin. They open the double wooden doors, creak after a knock upon the door, which is unlocked in the interior. Your mother stands inside of the room, and your father, is pretty great artwork, I add, is laying upon the bed. Half dead. I slowly lay there, seems to take no breath, below the light. Paladins are, or sorry, the clerics are attending to them. The high sunbringer is tending to them. They are doing everything they possibly can. Your mother, fully armored, geared, ready for war, walks up to you. High Sunbringer has been able to ascertain that your father will pass in a matter of hours. I have some regrets in life. But having you not say goodbye to your own father is one I will not. I will not have. You are not to get closer to them. You will be brought forth. You will not reach for them. You understand me, son. I understand. Morning, Lord. As you wish, my lady. Jessica begins to escort you. The side of the bed. There you are. Not grabbed on either side. Just a car behind you. Royal silvered on either side, looking down upon your father who is ghastly white, void of all color. Tended to by the best clerics of this land. Watch upon them. I'm going to stare down upon my father with a solemn look, and I'm going to try to feel out and see if I could get any response from my gift. Is my Do I feel like I could use my gift in this context? Make an insight check. You feel like an ailment has befell your father and that you might nay, you will be able Help their suffering, but to what end, to what consequence? Fall you. You always told me to do what I believe to try it. Go where I want to go. Do what I thought I should. I will be doing that now, and I'm going to use my gift. You look in the general direction, not moving your hands. Your eyes begin to cackle the purple and pink lightning. It begins to entrace your body, it shoots forth from your chest, from your soul. As a pillar beam of lightning strikes into your father, you see it's just a pallet and draws the weapon. They unsheath it in your general direction. The Royal Silver Guard, all in the same unison. Your mother says nothing. Draws the weapon as the lightning shoots forth. I will now explain 
your gift. You have the gift of friends. That's what it is referred to. As an action, you bond your life with another creature within 60 feet. Any damage or effect that the creature takes, you take instead. The bond lasts until you dismiss it with a bonus action, or you succumb to zero hit points or unconsciousness. You activate your gift. You take the ailment that has befell your father to you. As that happens, you collapse, faltering to the ground. In a mere moments, your father begins to gain color, the eyes alertness. The world for you is black. Now, for the rest of you, it's going to be the afternoon of the same early hours of the morning that Costas was removed from the prison. Watch Commander is going to return. <laughs> Look upon you all with it's all of mine. I give you news of your friend. Seems this magic they are in possession of. Dear their own father. But alas, they have been hit with the same affliction. They are still here, but they are not. Bring you the sadness and this new. Did the, the thing help? He suggested he did it. Commander, I need my spells. I need. I we we need to help him. Hey, did you say the same thing happened to our friend that happened to his father? Yes. Then wouldn't yes. it be simple to manage a cure? It requires someone close to them, right? It requires, from what I know, the blood of an offspring. Oh. Sadistic. Cruel. No one should watch the death of their own child. No one should outlive them. Looks at you, Othala. Othala walks and grabs the bars and looks the commander straight in his eyes. I'm not talking about any barbaric ways, anything to anything that Tali wanted us to do. I have the capabilities. We have the knowledge. Please, let me bring my friend back. You're wasting your breath. Make a persuasion check.
I have given a vow. I will uphold it. Until commanded otherwise. They walk away. Leaving you three in the jail. I think tonight uh, is when our time frame has moved up to. I think um, for a little while, Thala doesn't say anything. Uh, yeah. Sits now. So, as the days pass. Oh, no. No, no, no. Not days. We're going to do something that night. You're going to do something that night? What are you doing that night? Big. We're going to try and break out. Uh, also, um, during these weeks and days, would it have been possible to, like, every now and then use the gift to try and just get a general sense of where our belongings are, like, direction-wise? What do you mean, bearings, as far as, like, where you're at for Frostbeard? Like, so, Israel has been planning... In case of emergency, if we have to escape and find our stuff, like which direction we should try to maneuver towards? Finding your stuff, no one's talking. There's no evidence that you have to know where that is. The only person actually that could probably work that out is Costas because they are the no, person from the city. That's, I mean, like just using um, the gift like to do that. Oh, just activating your gift over and over again? Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. Uh, your items are not in Fort Frost Spirit. They are currently in Fort Heat. That is where you're feeling them from. Okay. I can tell you that much. That much. Yeah. Uh, as far as where you're currently located, as far as your understanding is you are uh, underneath the courtyard. Okay. Yep. Of the Mountain Bailey Keep known as the Frost. So you are on the opposite side of where your items, completely opposite side of the city where your items. And in a separate keep and a separate fortification. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's, you know, there's we no. Know. What? I, real quick, talk about this. Is there in any world where without our stuff we can get from here across the city? We can. I think we can get out. We just have to try and. It's going to be a matter of making it out of the fort. And into the city area in general, and to hiding and try and make it across. I think it'd be easier if we all had the full stones. Like I, I get the idea, but getting I mean, out of here. Would be Kit's like a barbarian. Like Kit, Kit, Kit just needs a either. weapon. Well, I mean that's so that that's true. Like I can cause a distraction for you guys, um, which is which might be the best use of Kit in this case, um, so you guys can get out of here. But like, Kit, there's no way Kit's making it. I mean, he's a big dude and he ain't stealthy. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, middle of the night, we just try and get out of here, knock a few people out, maybe, but just run for it. Like, <laughs> you're, I mean, Kit's pretty athletic, right? Uh, yeah, he is. Not so much on the stealth side. <laughs> Not worried about stealth necessarily, though. It's by brute force um, and speed to get out of here. Yeah. Dang. But we got to go all... Isn't it... I don't want to click off the map because I don't want them to have to drag me back on there, but isn't it all the way... Like, we're on opposite sides of the city right now, right? That's that's the secondary goal, though. First goal, as long as we can get out of here, I think we can eventually get there. And he, he's... But now... Hold on, where where do they take Costas to? We don't even know where they took him to. Yeah, I also like. Uh, do we? We don't, and I wanted to. 
I know Ishru wants to leave, and I, I, I do. Trust me, I do. I, 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 I want to get out of here too. <laughs> I don't want to be sitting in this cell anymore. No, but I, I also want to try one thing before. If, if we're all like, I, I know getting to the commander was not good. Um, I mean, I fake it just hearing we, that Costas is not alive-ish is enough right. of a catalyst to do something. Othala <laughs> is very, very, very certain he can do something, and he is aching. Today is like that day where he's just quiet and just thinking and contemplating. I think he he has an idea of if the commander won't listen to him, he's going to reach out directly to try to reach out to cost his parents. And I think the only way he can think about how to do that is for the first time is him talking to Paylor and seeing if Paylor will give this message to them or help out some way, give a sign or something. And if all and goes, have- you know, I'm sorry. We have no way to contact DJ, right? You guys can't without your stuff no. do a, a sending or a message or anything. No. Nope. I mean, one is has the spell capabilities, but if he's with Joe, I'd say he'd be trying to conserve his magic to yeah protect him. So, I mean, you could have done yeah your. Uh... 10 minute cast like that could have been mm-hmm. done like the same day yeah, 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 you could yeah, see yeah, if same. something happened that's what <laughs> i'm saying worried. before yeah. you know before all options are ran yeah. out try the hell mary option i guess for the last one sure try that how long was costas's oh michael stepped away i think i'm here um oh okay how long do we know t- time wise um how long from the the poison to when they took Costas to see his dad, like day wise, would we be able to to guess? Are you talking about the poison against Tanyan? Uh, that would yeah, talking about the yeah, start yeah. of that. Yeah. So you've been yeah. you've been a little over a week now, two days. And I will say Costas is also much tougher than Tanyan. That's what the kids always think. And by it's the, way, the, it's it's the same day that Costas did what he did. It's just that happened. So we have some time. Theoretically, have some time. Mm. If it, I, if it, I, yeah, I mean, well, I guess, be, I guess I'm thinking that the poison starts anew, so maybe not. He said, because the gift said that you take the ailment that that person is yeah. suffering in that moment. So if he had a few hours to live, and that's how that poison was reacting. Sure, if Costas has more constitution than the than his father, he can prolong yeah. it maybe for a few hours. But like, he only had a few hours, so that's why Othala is quiet shaking his feet thinking about this and it's like if we leave he's very very afraid that Costas will die for sure uh, but if we don't leave he will die for sure yeah yeah so if we do leave there's a chance we can get to him if mm-hmm. we don't leave there's zero percent chance yeah, yeah. So I, I think I think if if either way we're gonna leave, but trying to get that so that we don't look like the enemies is, yeah. is what yeah. I'm trying to do here. So look, I, yeah. I'll just I mean this is gonna sound very callous, but I said last week that I would play Kit the way that Kit would think about this. Uh in in Kit's mind, Costas did this to himself. No, oh, Costas totally did. Oh, yeah. And uh and Although Kit has a desire to get out there and help him, I also know that it seems to be working best for us to just stay here and do nothing right now um, for ourselves uh, and to try to keep on persuading. The commander did leave us with something, which was he had an oath to uphold, and we don't even know what that means because he left right away. So he may have been relaying again that you know we're trying to help. Um, whether Costas makes it long enough for that to happen, I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. It, 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 it gets at the line at the at the point where he just wants to get out of here, and he breaking out for him and trying to do anything is uh, 
it, it's possible, but I just don't see how how that gets us to cost us to help him because. Did did uh Ukar didn't tell us where Costas was? Nope. But we no. know that our gear is in the fort. Or not the fort, but the um the keep. Yeah. And I think it's probably logical that we would we would think that he's either with the sun tree in the temple or at the keep as well. Which is still all the way across town. I don't know. I mean, are you guys dead set on trying to save Costas? I was dead set on saving his father. And I'm going to feel the same about how I feel about Costas. I, as much as I'm upset with him and what's going on, I don't agree with the decisions he's making. I don't and want him to not exist anymore. Yeah, and Claire, you're you think we can get across town? I think if we don't even try, it is tantamount to doing the deed ourselves. I mean, look, if you guys ask, especially you two, ask Kit for his help, uh, Kit's probably going to gonna try to help out any way that he can. So, Before we get to that, though, let's see if uh, Michael has anything for Othala's connection to Pelor. Yeah, first time calling a god, so. Who this? <laughs> All right, so you're using, uh, what are you using <laughs> particularly? I'm going to take out my essence. Um, mm. Gonna hold it, and I'm gonna think in my head. All my thoughts are gonna just, just gonna be thinking to him. I don't know if this is gonna work, but um, Paylor, you there? voice speaks spending 10 minutes calling the divine I am here my child um don't normally do this um I appreciate you taking the time to listen I'm a companion, one of your followers. Cost this morning light. We've gotten news that he's no longer with us. But I have the capabilities of helping him. And that's what I want to do. But in order to do that, feel as if I need your help to relay this message, reach out to his mother and father, give them a sign, a push, something that will allow us to be there and help other friends. That's what I ask of you. You ask to intervene on my devoted's path to redemption. An oath they had taken, an oath they must walk to regain 
they will either survive this or they will falter and be lost for all time. This is their choice. To intervene on the path that my children walk. That is not my power. I am here in the end, after their service and their mortal life has been accomplished, to give them a life after their suffering. My advice and guidance to you is to have patience. In the darkest of times, we cower and we fear. But as the daybreak comes, so does the sunlight pushing back the shadows, and our fears run away with them. See to the morning, and see what it brings. Thank you for your wisdom. Just wish there is more I can do. I didn't I don't mean to intervene on their path. I think Odala ends the connection. He doesn't. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just kind of in, you know, you're, if you wish to continue it, you could, but yeah. No, there's I think not Odala much. just ends it there and then is in some thoughts. His head to the wall and then talks to the others. Okay. His advice. that we wait till the morning. Wonderful advice from someone who's perfectly content uh, if they do die to welcome them with open arms to the afterlife. I agree, but at the same time, What's a few hours, this true? Life and death. Not that big of a deal, I guess. I mean... So we're going against fate then, huh? I couldn't care less about the deities and what they wanted. It's kind of all their fault. This whole thing exists with the Devourer anyways, doesn't it? I mean, could say that. Also could say that just hand in hand of them existing. You know, a creature being a creature is just them being their own the devourer was the result of that. I do I... understand. 
and I want to help. So, if you want to do this issue, I'm I'm okay with it. Do you have something that could help cost us if we make it out? If I can get to my spell book, I can help cost us. I think that's better than letting fate play out, whatever that means. Yeah. So if already gets any other uh, seeing, seeing the role play dwindle down, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and, and get over to something else here uh, that maybe not enlightening you all here, but uh, given that you don't know this. Lucas, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking of a dramatic speech in case you need to do it. <laughs> Oh, it's Big Melon. Scott's this morning light as the world grew black and things became difficult. You slowly begin to arise yourself, pain in your head, and on a crack, if you will, stone. These runic patterns line themselves every so often, extend into an endless world a vibrancy, rich life. In front of you lies some sort of gate as such for your intents and purposes <clears throat> the rings that form that gate are not moving overgrown one lies inside of the platform it is Magilla they hold themselves in the same robes the hands behind the back as they slowly begin to turn and look And they see you. Ghost this morning, Clyde. Come. Come. And that's where we'll go and take a break. Hmm. So we're going to go and take a 10 minute break here. We'll come back about 6 16 p.m. PST. If you're watching the stream next much, really appreciate it. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.
All right, welcome back. Thanks so much for rejoining us as we uh, say good, say la vie to a character. I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> the sky above you here uh, is this gate, is quote unquote, these rings and circle uh, platform, right? This old wizard Magello standing at the sky and the clouds. They're very vibrant, moving, rolling, a lot of wind, but yet no wind. Seems as though nothing's moving, but the clouds are moving. Magella has beckoned for you to approach. Sir Cost is morning. I'll do just that. Um, can I look? Can I like, observe these weird orbs? Sure. What are you trying to figure out from them? What the fuck they are? <laughs> well, they look awesome. They're like little glass spherical objects that have many tiny spaces inside them. They're overgrown, covered by roots. Okay, can I make a check to figure out what they are? Like if they're magical or something? Yeah, uh, you could. I don't know what you're going to ascertain just by looking at them. Um, make an arcana check if that's what you wish. No, no. Magical, perhaps? Yeah, let's maybe do, like, Arcana, yeah. Seven. <laughs> Last balls. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Seems accurate. Okay, I keep walking. Um, what kind of architectural style is this path? Is it, like, elven, dwarvish? <laughs> you want to make a history check. Like, I need to know what the afterlife, like, who made the afterlife? Come on. Um, let's see. There we go. Looks good. It's nice. <laughs> well built. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what about these ruins? <laughs> Uh, you've seen this language uh, before. It's the language of time. Oh, it's the language of time. Fun. I need to tell a fella. So... Hello, boy. Ah, hello, Magello. Before we get into pleasantries, um, let me tell you right now, you're not dead. So... Oh, I'm not. Yes, I uh, saw yeah. you uh, eyeballing where you're at here. You're in a safe place. At least, your mind is. Can you tell me where the safe place is? Looks kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I could not tell you. Is this a secret? As is many things. Kept hidden away. Protected. Is, <clears throat> is this like your demiplane or something? <laughs> well, no. How would I describe this to you? This is something that is allow us to look at the worlds that are throughout the entire material plane. It is lost. It has not been used. It requires some TLC. Tender love again. The likes of which I and all the others have been able to duties, my good sir. Wait, well, let me tell you. I really cannot tell you anymore. Oh, come on. I have brought you here for one purpose. <laughs> and that is... to tell you. But what you have achieved, what you have done, hard ways the likes of the others that roam your world. You have stood a champion in the likes of villainy and darkness and and devil, the master of crime. The outcomes may not have been what you wished, but alas, that is what they are. And that is exactly and precisely what I and the rest of your party I and what I need the rest of your party to do. 
continue to act as you are your self-sacrifice for your father. I have been keeping a watchful eye. I will be amiss at a distance as what is needed at the stage. But, alas, the time is near. We will have words. We will speak. Stay strong, cast this morning light. Thank you. You are most well. Oh, oh, well, one more thing. I, uh, I have to ask you. <clears throat> Why didn't you kill that assassin? I'm just really oh. curious. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. I'll humor the kidding. answer. I'll humor the answer. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll, I'll, that's... We can roll a bit. <laughs> See as they put a hand onto your shoulder. Good lad. Off you go. Strike your head. <clears throat> the real hours of the morning. Stroke of midnight. Back it up a little bit. All you might give yourself a little bit of a candle. You can muster something. Looking at the torch. Happy birthday to me. Any plan that you have it's late enough it's like there's only one guard on duty right now okay so hmm so there's a plan we could do so basically the people with stones we could probably get out of here without any force yeah like i was thinking maybe something small exactly like a spider or something like yeah exactly but then we would have to leave kit here you're muted dustin damn it quietly kit will, will whisper i think it'll fall in the one next to me mm -hmm. um I'm not going to be any use of you guys getting to anywhere or anything. I can cause a distraction here, I think. But Kit... Kit thinks... that Paylor was maybe right in his advice and patience is key. Careful, you keep going along that line of thinking, you're just going to end up praying for the dead who were lost. I'll, once again, Costas did this to himself. This is the second time he's put everybody in danger for himself. For no reason. For no Cost reason. Costas makes a lot of dumb choices. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to go along with it. It's, it's what we do for the people that are close to us. Kind of why we're called the wayward ones. I think Kit is right, though. Yeah. Making a distraction is probably as much as he can do without one of the stones or his items, but if we go that route, we'll be making a scene. And yeah. 
if we choose to go stealthy with just you and me. I know you might hate this idea, but even if things go wrong, it's not it wouldn't be hard for us to slip back in. Yeah. So in this case, we wouldn't really need you to do anything, Kit. Except we'll keep be patient. An eye on, well, Kit will keep an eye on the guard. If he starts to move down or notice you, I will I will make distraction. If not, good luck. Yeah, we'll need it. Um, Othala will start. It's a hay bed. I was looking at the art, but is it yeah. like so I'm going to start just maneuvering some hay. It's not a hay bed. Um, mm -hmm. It's insulated underneath with hay. They pack it underneath. So you're not... Um, it's cold. Okay, there's not any source of heat here. There's no fireplace or whatever. Uh, so what they're doing here is you actually have like a, a wooden metallic bed frame. You have a cot on it. Blanket, you got a pillow. And there's just stashed bundles of hay that sits underneath the bed and pulls up through the actual uh, pull, 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 piles in, pushes through the, the slats, right? So your cod is also not just sitting on a, a frame, but also it's sitting on the hay itself, right? It's strong. So yeah, okay. there's plenty of it. Tons of it. So I'm, I'm just going to try to take whatever I can, whatever materials from the bottom without moving too much. Um, and just trying to make a make a imitation sleeping person in the bed. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. That's a good a, idea. Go and make a performance check. I'll do that too. A performance <laughs> check? I don't know. Is that performance? Yeah, I think it's performance based. Would it be intelligent? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I think it's gonna be performance like theater, right? It's kind okay, of like okay. Making like a, a mannequin or a dummy, kind of a theater performance, right? Or if you, you have look proficiency with like disguise, yeah, uh, like wish. disguise skits, maybe. Yeah. I wish. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Oh no! Nope. Those look so <laughs> realistic. So good. <laughs> Never thought in Ooh. hundreds of years of life, Israel, that you would ever have to make something such as this. God, it seems no. like a absolute fuck all. You put it in the bed. <laughs> and you know it's never gonna work. Othala, yep, yep. you are doing the same. You come to the, almost your same conclusions, but you put a smiley face in yours, and that's what matters. <laughs> nice. It's <Yeah>. happy. <laughs> I think it looks right. I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm going to turn into a jumping spider. Okay. Is drill? Uh, hmm. Can I turn into... I don't know if there's like a and d version of it, but can I be like a little like, um, like a mosquito or a, like a fly or a gnat or something? I think the rules say you can't be that small have to be ruled as a tiny sized creature so even if it's a spider it's still pretty decent in terms of its size mm -hmm. um, i think the closest you can get if you want to be like a flying small sized creature well like oh uh, uh, yeah uh, like, uh, do a horse fly Hey man, horse fries are pretty big. Yeah, but well, I'm just saying, like, like it, it as be, yeah. they're, they're pretty big. Still a tiny creature. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to think of something he could do that could fly that <clears throat> would work size wise. Yeah, that if I see Israel becoming a fly, I think I would become a fly instead of a, a spider. But if we do, yeah, we can't, I'm with a spider. Well, I mean, it's not really like. Yeah, it's not really written the rules per se, but it has to be within a size that fits one of the beasts that already exists. So, like, you can't be like a swarm, right? No, we're not like a like the equivalent so, of a sturge. Trying to see. I'm just gonna do a quick search here and see if I can find.
giant bee. <laughs> well, I, that would be fucking big. Oh, is fucking, it big? <laughs> yeah, those are actually really large. Um, you can be as just a spider, right? A spider mm -hmm. is just not flying. A sturge. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, like yeah, a I guess a sturge. Yeah. What the hell is a sturge? Uh, also, I was I would just say that so we could we could do two things. You know, we could become spiders now, exit, and then become like a bird or something. When True. We get out yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So the sturge is a cross between a mosquito and a bat. <laughs> what the fuck? Ew. It looks <laughs> disgusting. This yeah, is it's gross it's... as fuck. Let me see if I can get this. Here. Oh my god, I see it. It's like a <laughs> mosquito. Like Ew. A mosquito head Ew. with a bat. Oh, I see this. <laughs> oh, That's what it is right there. Do you see it on your screen? It looks like a here. rat. Ew. Yeah. Look at this thing. This is whoever made this had some fucked up dreams, man. <laughs> yeah. This is the scariest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at its fucking hands. What? It's statue. It's pretty it's good. It's got like point. hands and it's, it's too human like, I think. And the yeah. way its eyes are and its hair. Mm. Why does it only have hair on the head and like the know. whole body is like flat? Well, because it's supposed to be like a half a bat. So bats generally have that, the hair That's around the head. Right. I can't look at that anymore. I'm getting sick. Let's just go with the Thalos plan. Go spider first and see if we can get out. And then we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So you both change shape. Like... Begin yeah. little tiny spiders. You then begin to make your way out. Easy is done. You just kind of went through the keyhole of the door there leading out of the jail. You begin to work up the staircase on the side of the wall. Eventually, you encompass another door. You move through the keyhole again. And you're in a circular like chamber that is going to lead to the upper floors. Um, primarily the second floor or the third floor of where this tower lies. Numerous amounts of supplies in here. Very similar to a quartermaster's uh, supply house. You know, they have armaments, weapons, things like that that they can grab, stuff like that, um, all common based. And from there, you kind of see some light coming, moonlight as it shines through of the north eastern door of the circular chamber. You begin to skirt yourself over there. Eventually, torch oh, question. light. Question. Will... Yeah, go ahead. Before we hit that, that room, um, was there like any guards in that supply room at the moment? I'm... And that a guard will be passing gotcha. down the staircase okay. as they are moving and patrolling the area. You are kind of waiting for a brief moment as they pass through to a neighboring door on the opposite side that leads to a corridor of the first floor. You then continue on your way, looking around and waiting. No guard has moved past in the next 10 minutes or so. And you're kind of just in the chamber. Hanging out. Know. Which chamber? You're in the you're in the same chamber that those weapons and armors. And oh, things okay, are. yeah, yeah. Um, would it be possible to just grab a sword and then shift back? Sure. Change change, and you're able to grab a sword here. You're able to grab a long sword. I would. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do the same and just. Hmm. Okay. They've got battle. <laughs> I'll grab a dagger. Too. A dagger? I, okay. I, I can't use anything but a dagger and a quarterstaff. <laughs> yep. Find a dagger. At least I could, I could use a sword for Blade Song. <laughs> Holding it, you feel good. Got some weight in your yep. hands, a little dagger. And then you change shape back to a spider. Right. See if we can continue finding a way out. Is there the other doors go through? Continue. There's only two doors here one leading uh, slightly north, right? And it seems to go into a corridor, and then there is a northeastern door, and that has moonlight shining through some of the uh, kind of gaps of the door. Um, you also have the sound of like a brazier that's a lit with flame, like a dancing flame through that door. And then there's the staircase as it rounds up to the second floor. I mean, moonlight door sounds promising. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should go there. Yep. Sounds like outside. Okay. You work yourself across the floor, skittering. Eventually, you kind of come under the edge of the lip of the door. You then are in the courtyard. You can see that there is going to be uh, a balcony-like banister that lies on the west side of the courtyard, where the, cor the corridor from the first floor is beginning to go underneath, most likely in a space. So there's a chamber uh, there, and then it goes underneath that area. A staircase leads up to that. This would be serving, you know, for watch if people are training the courtyard, judging them, kind of having a little bit of a vantage point. Has a straw thatching for covering over there, and then it's a walkway. Serves as a walkway as well, 
which continues that general direction. Warrior is very small. I mean, we're talking maybe 40 feet tops in terms of its actual length and width. There's not much here. The mannequins, things for archery dummies and targets and stuff, training maneuver-like things, and this cobbled, like, snow-covered terrain. And then you have the gatehouse that lies on the south side here, and it's very close to you. you know, again, it's only about 50 to 20 feet that you'll actually get in the direction of the gate itself. It has a double wooden door that's barred, portcullis on the opposite side. There are guard outside of that door, currently sitting there, the double wooden door that's barred. So they're pretty close to you, probably around the realm of 25, 30 feet. Just talking, shooting the shit. Above them is the actual gatehouse itself. And that's accessible by the stairs that you actually were just from. That's a little bit of like a little tower that's going to lead up to that gatehouse. And the gatehouse is on the second floor, and the gates themselves are accompanying the first floor. Other than that, in terms of stuff, there's a couple doors on the opposite side of you, very much similar on the northeast corner. So you continue northeast, you're going to kind of reach another little bit of a tower that's most likely going to emulate what you have here, almost mimicry, so, so to speak. And it will have rooms primarily on the second floor. The first floor doesn't really have any rooms. There's just little spaces and stuff for storage and supplies and things. But the main rooms, which only a handful of them, are going to be on the second floor. And there are very rarely, except for those tower-like structures, are going to be a third floor. Because they just serve as a vantage point. <clears throat> as described, it's very Mott and Bailey-like. So the stone itself primarily sits at the base of the, of the ground and of the walling here. And then it's going to work itself up to wood and straw thatching. There's not going to be a whole lot of materials that can sustain an elongated siege if they're hit by trebuchets or magonels on the upper floors. The stone defenses that are here is if it, you know, did its best it could to build things up in the interior and on the first floor. But a lot of the structure that has gaps and positions of where you'd imagine, I would make this better, that's wood. And mm -hmm. most likely it shows, it shows its age, that it just was never put to any, uh, you know, it's never kind of given to love. And this could be because they decided to make another keep in a better position. You know, you don't know. Right. As far as guard are concerned, what you have, numbers, right? <laughs> you hear voices up in the gatehouse. So there's most likely a handful of guard up there maintaining the wench-like mechanism which lifts up the portcullis. You also have to find a way to get the bar off the double door. And that's where two guard currently are in the inside of the keep of the courtyard here, right next to. There's motions and movements with handfuls of torches along the walkway of that balcony. And they're opening doors of stone and wood as they enter, or sorry, stone and metal as they enter into some of the second floor uh, corridors and most likely to certain chambers. You kind of sit there for a moment, counting numbers, right? You have brazier light nearby you at the corner piece, kind of corner stances of some of the stone circulars, kind of as the towers themselves are very circular and they reach, and then those angles come outwards, like tucked posits, uh, kind of very tight spaces where that stone is kind of uh, <clears throat> blending together and building together in the bricks. That's where those brazers are going to be lit. And so you're staying in the shadow of the light, so to speak. It's a good way to describe it. So you're keeping an attentive eye. You're watching your counting numbers. You can put in the terms of amount of guard right now that you've seen in the next 10 minutes or so, uh, around 18. Mm -hmm. Now, there was moonlight coming in, right? Yes, so there are two moons in this world. Uh, there's Lilystar and Sorion. One of the moons is at full moon right now, and that is Sorion, and that is the closest of the two moons. And so even with that slight overcast and the drifting of snow, that moon is just beaming light right now. Mm -hmm. and just, so there's an opening in this for the moonlight to come through. Of course. Yeah. So is it possible for us to just kind of like scurry up and out that way? Oh, yeah. The interior of the keep is open. Uh, Mott and Bailey. Okay. Um, it's hard to, when I say that term, it's like, uh, let me see if I can get a picture of a Mott and Bailey keep or a castle here. Yeah. If it all helps, like our plan is like get outside and then shift into birds and take off. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> It's actually a really good 
as I said, it's it's like it, and it, again, I'm not saying it is a Mont Bailey Castle. It's like a Mont Bailey Castle. So let's see if I can get a tile here. Okay. 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 Uh, so what they're what they're describing, we're gonna get to a little bit of a freehand drawing. So the plateau serves as that moat. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can also change from white there. Uh, change it to black. Will it still stay black? I don't know. It's gonna stay white. Okay. How do I change that? Oh God, I <laughs> I don't know. Wait, hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, apply, apply. Uh, configure default. Okay. Okay. Yay! There we go. Drawing tools. I'll tell you what. Okay. So the plateau serves as the as the boat, right? So the plateau kind of goes around the entire structure, if you will, at the top end. Then there's going to be switchbacks that go down to the bailey, which sits here, and then they have kind of a defensive position where to enter into that bailey there. Okay, so there are going to be structures along the switchbacks as they go down, and those structures are going to be, you know, housing. They could be kind of stationary kind of structures for the guard who are temporary. Uh, very small, not many at all. So you can really get lost in this. The alleyways are tight, handful of structures. Uh, there is an actual tavern that's in here, a bar uh, in the fortification. The walls themselves that surround everything are stone, okay? So there's not going to be any walls that surround everything that are going to be wood. And the keep itself is partially wooden, not entirely. So you have an opening because these castles, the way they're designed, is that in the center point of them is nothing. They're like a wall. It's just a square with an open space. In so you're literally outside completely yep. staring up at just open sky for 40 by 40 feet. Does that help? I don't know if it does. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Okay. Yeah, so... Spider. Spider Othalo just look at Spider is true. Nod. Yep. Yeah. Change. And I'm guessing we're gonna fly to the keep. Uh, yep. To find our to get our gear. Okay. Will we hit the cathedral before we get to the keep? Yeah. Um I say we just coast by. Um just to see what's going on again. Uh, see if more guards are stationed or less guards are stationed there. We can. Okay. So taking off, what are you changing to to fly? Just the same creatures or the, uh, the mosquito crazy <laughs> stirs thing was? So, yeah. <laughs> That's what's, a, what's a local bird that we've seen around? Yeah. A pigeon. There you go. A pigeon. <laughs> a rock pigeon. pigeon sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Easy one. Changing a rock pigeon, you begin to take flight, gaining some altitude. Keep itself, not very tall. You only have to gain uh, about 40 feet or so before you clear over the walls of the keep. Then you can kind of see how the design sits up high and those walls of the outer city are reaching in the direction of the keep at the base of the stone. And then from there are going to be the fort's walls, which are much smaller and older. Again, two gatehouses, one here at the keep itself, and then there's a gatehouse down at Bailey, so to speak, right? Where uh, that will kind of reach into the military district. You are going to take flight. You just head in the direction of West as a bird, pretending you're a pigeon. As you fly, you can see one of the guards in an arrow slit of one of the towers of the actual keep itself. A frostbeard here is going to kind of look at the arrow slit and they stare at your little pigeon wings as you fly. That's good eating there, isn't it? Mm. No, Charlie, don't waste the shot. And you continue to fly. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. just kidding. I always think about pigeons in a way, and they just, you know, bam! Rats in the sky. Okay. Yeah. You're going to cruise by the Sun Tree Cathedral. You notice that they're, it's still defended. So there's still, uh, everything you witnessed with Arcane Eye is still present. Um, the courtyard there, uh, Sun Courtyard that's presented there, um, you know, it's late. There's lights every so often traders and other things, steal people there. So it's not like they're closing off the entire district 
sealing it shut. Still people freely coming in and going. Just nobody's going into the cathedral itself. Okay. <laughs> so, you begin to head in the direction of Flora Keep. At this point, you're able to see that the defenses of the Flora Keep are put on quite out. There's a drawbridge. It's raised. There's a rampart on the north side that leads into a kind of corral, storage, stabling area of the keep on the first floor. Like a garage. That rampart right now, that door is shut. It has a portcullis that's lowered down. A double wooden door that's shut behind it. There are towers that linger on each of the corners of the keep that's squared off. And also, just like this other keep you've come from, has an open space in the interior which is open to the sky. Those towers are lit. They have coverings over top, conical in shape, arrow slits on their octagonal like frames, and there are shadows and movements looking down and around. There are walkways between these towers on the third floor of this keep. Those also are lined with arrow slits, not only on the outer side, but the inner side as well that look down to the keep. Courtyard. Flying as a pigeon would, <clears throat> being mindful. The difference with this keep and the other one, floor keep is significantly larger. Its three stories are accompanied by a fourth, which helps serve the towers as well as the wall segment. It has elevation pitches in the way that the structure sits because it is built out of a huge, massive bedrock. And then the western side of the keep is primarily entirely in the mountainside. So when we talk about the throne room, speaking with Floor and going through that, you're actually entering into the mountain. So you're in the open courtyard, you're looking around, and then you kind of come in. They bring you through a checkpoint, if you will, with arrow slits in the side. Interior wall is there to fire on any intruders as the last point of defense. And then you go into this grand area. Well, the, most of the grand area is inside of the mountain. And then there's doors leading right in the west side. Those are going further to other chambers. A wrapping corridor goes around on the first floor, some of which is open, inviting those inside of the interior courtyard to then go to other areas. They have <clears throat> these semi-arched, what's referred to as an arcade, in terms of architectural design. The arcade covers and overhangs those walkways of the first floor that are open to the courtyard. And then those arcades are going to continue in the interior on the opposite side. So a lot of accents, a lot of beauty, right, in terms of the architecture here. It's masonry by dwarves. So a lot of the corner pieces are going to have these uh, cornice of facade. They're going to have almost like these uh, kind of extensions to overhang to cover from the ailment, uh, kind of the weather effects. They're going to be carved elegantly and smooth rather than kind of craggly and scratched. So not a lot of foot or handhold, right? The pillars are going to be spiralized as they twirl around. As a pigeon, they pay you no mind. You lay into the courtyard. At that point, you have many shrines and beauty to the sun god here. There's walkways of vibrancies that move themselves through, and wintry bushes and even trees lie in this courtyard. The courtyard itself is quite large. It's about two and a half times that of the other keep itself. It's just massive. And much of it is not used for training. Much of it is used as a peace harmony to be able to, as a paladin, to stride with your heart. Look at my service that's rendered. Look at the beauty that's offered in the grand of my lord's keep. Here, let's take a moment and look at this small fountain. Even though frozen, its beauty will lighten in the summer months when the snow will melt slightly and the beautiful white roses will bloom, right? Ugh, so those black statues <laughs> at the center point of the courtyard is actually the marbled statue that Cossus's dad made. <laughs> <laughs> so there's like, I mean, it's just <laughs> elegant, beyond elegance. But you've never been to any places in the keep. You're not Costas either. Costas also doesn't know where the treasury is. So these so, things are protected and hidden away. You land as a bird on top of the same statue. 
that causes his death. I say um, we we let's go into a brush or a bush that's nearby, okay. and then reshift into spiders. Okay. And then, as a spider in the br bush, can we use? Can I use the gift again to get a sense of direction? Uh, yeah. Uh, one moment. I'm gonna shut my door. That was being super loud. Excuse me one second. Do do you want that level of exhaustion? I don't think it's exhaustion. When you use your gift, you don't get it. You don't get a level of exhaustion. No, because it it's changed. It changed from being action to now. It takes a minute to mm. cast. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm. Okay. So land into a bush. Cling to it. You want to use your gift as a uh, a spider. Yep. Okay. Sit there in your spider form on a nearby branch. You can concentrate really hard. Purple and cast and lightning begin to surround you, vibrating around you as the cocoon begins to billow. Hold yourself there. Then Trio, paladins, you're going to walk through the courtyard, some distance, coming close, around 40 feet. You're giving off light. Well, bouncing. I'm inside the bush. Um, I know. Because you said there was a bush, right? Yeah. Take a stealth check. Uh, can I try? Oh, yeah. That's a reaction thing. I was going to try to cast a non-action on Estra if I can. It's an innate spell I have to just block the magic that's around her. <clears throat> I target that you touch from divination magic. So this is only for scrying sensors and other things. This is a, not. This is a visible perception that they're seeing. A like yeah, yeah, okay. best way to interpret this is literally like a fucking light, like a like a Christmas light on a tree. Um, <laughs> but you're it. inside <laughs> okay. the bush, so it's like. But remember, the it's a, it's a it's it doesn't have like a lot of leaves on. Okay. Oh, never, said, never so, mind. Yeah. But but there's a, there's foliage. It's not that you're not hidden. Yeah. It's not that you're not concealed. But you're giving off like a little bit of light, which is kind of weird in the darkest of the courtyard, right? And so yeah. Right. I um, would have been a little smarter about it then. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not possible. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now that you using your gift to cocoon yourself with purple pink lightning is a tiny little thing in a bush and beginning to glow. Could be something of, of an eye. I'm not gonna. T I can't say say that or not. Um, what I want from you is a stealth check. Really, is what this comes down to. Because it's how well you actually hid yourself in the bush. That's what it is, right? Yeah, the, I was just under the impression it, it was a thicker bush. But if it's not a thick bush and there is would be a, a visible light from it, then even if you it, yeah. okay, let me say this: even if you are in total concealment, you're giving off a light source. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're a total concealment and you're giving up if you're light source and your stealth check in that foliage, if it's if it's not good enough, that light is gonna come through in the gaps in certain things. That's what I'll tell you. But if you want to break line of sight and you want to be sort of somewhere no one can see in the courtyard, you could probably find something and get yourself into an area, maybe behind one of the shrines, maybe in the handholds of somewhere where the shadows are working in your favor, so to speak, where if it does give off light, not really going to be a big deal, especially if maybe you're a brazier or torchlight. Some of these kind of lamp posts that are extending in the courtyard you may be able to curve yourself into that and get your lightning going. No one's really going to bat an eye if a lantern, a torch, or a brazier is giving off light, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's another avenue of approach. But... You just got to tell me, I'm just giving you some guidance. Obviously, theater of mind here. I don't plan on putting us onto a battle map because I don't think you all are going to go to violence. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and you are tiny spiders. So even if this, even if they happen to come about you, you can simply just stop and then inch away. Yeah, I mean, just, it's more just like breaking line of sight. Like maybe going behind one of the buildings or statues when nobody's around and doing it. 
Okay. So you're able to, uh, let's say one of the shrines, we'll go with that. You're able to break line of sight. Um, one of the shrines and their statue marbling it extends outwards. Is a clerical figure giving harmony and peace to those who kneel before them uh, and ask for a prayer. They're backed as well by, let's say, the interior of the courtyard wall there. So now you have shadows upon shadows upon shadows. Taking the men and begin to cackle with the purple pink lightning here. The patrol as it moves by is on the wiser. Is passing into one of the doors, which is on the south side of the entrance into the throne chamber. You can hear voices and other things happening from in there. Most likely, the watch that is put onto the keep here are changing or having meal time, something like that. You hear almost like a tavern, like environment, cups and platters and clinks and stuff. <clears throat> what are you exactly looking for? Just your items? Yeah, our belongings. Yeah. Yep. As you channel it, you feel very strongly that in the same direction that those three trio had gone, that that is the same door, or that of the throne chamber is the same door that you want to go to. You're feeling a presence in the direction of the southwestern section of the keep. Would point the one of eight legs that way. Oh, by the way, you could all speak. You could speak common, just what so you could talk. It's not like a wild shape. You could you could talk to each other as spiders. You maintain all your languages. You shouldn't have told them. <laughs> no, we're doing spider things the whole time. I'm like I'm like waddling back and forth, like side to side, I'm playing charades. Over here. <laughs> are are the guards far away from us? Or like like there is that... no patrol in the courtyard right now. The trio is all you saw. Um, you, there's eyes on you from the arrow slits of that third floor of the keep they surround. There's arrow slits that ring all around. There's towers that are accompanying a fourth floor, a conical shape. They have arrow slits that also go down to the courtyard. You can see there's shadows and movement from inside. Most likely those guard in there that are looking down. Guard nearby you? No. You don't see any. The throne, cha the throne door, even though you have a feeling from that, you're pretty, you're, you're, you're pretty sure that that's going to be locked. Like, you're not, even though there's no guard on the outside of it in the cold, you remember how they had a, a defensive fortification going into the interior of the mountainside, flanked by arrow slits to the interior wall segments. That door could be locked, and they have another door on the inside of that. So, you know, if there's any guard, most likely in the throne chamber itself, right? Getting at the ready if anybody's just kind of charged through, but they're not going to leave guard posting outside in freezing temperatures when there's a better place to defend. Well, shall we? Yeah. Far away. Okay. So you're aiming for the same door that those trio had gone in, which is open and sits next to an arcade, which has an open corridor under, you know, underhang of where they're coming in. As you come in, you're entered into a large dining hall. Many rectangular tables adorned with the runners of that wine coloration with the surcoat of uh, the, the symbol of floor, that silver griffin. Now, no symbol of morning light has adorned any of these. There are chandeliers hanging from the black granite of the stone, and those chandeliers have candlelight that are giving an ambiance of a very cozy atmosphere. Pillars spiralized are beginning to span upwards in every sort of interval, in interval of 15 to 20 feet to a vaulted ceiling. Most likely that this same dining hall encompasses not just the first floor, but the second floor as well. There is um, a, it's commonly referred to as a balcony that sits ringing itself around the dining hall looking down. No tables are upon there, but there is a staircase that's going to lead up to in the direction of that second floor. And then there's a door, singular, as it goes, most likely to rooms of the second floor on the western wing. Uh, allowing those rooms to have access to the dining hall. 
kitchen sits adjacent to the dining hall and also there is a staircase in that kitchen which is going to lead down into a underdwelling cellar if you will and other cooking kind of devices that can be used to fulfill the needs of a dining hall that has over four dozen tables large banquet styles there are some interior rooms inside of here those doors, as they swing open, will give way to privies. Allow for the drainage of one. Those are going to be facing outer. But we're now in the interior right now of the mountainside. So when I say they're facing outer, most likely pushing in the direction of west. And they're going to dispense down in a place that you kind of catch on. Must mean there's something underneath this. There's stuff underneath, obviously, the kitchen, which is kind of like down west-south of you, right? But these privies are more northern in the chamber, and those kind of catch your attention. And you're making way across the dining hall, skirting yourselves as little spiders, dodging the footsteps of the guard uh, at the paladins that are here, eating and drinking and tending to themselves in their night watch. For kicks... I want you all both to make dexterity checks. I think it's funny. Let's go. <laughs> Easily done as spiders. Dodging the, the boots as they stomp down. Making sure that you're not going to get crushed. Even if that happens, it's not a big deal. But you don't want to draw attention. You begin to hear chatter, conversation over here. There is a bit of strife within this outfit. Talking that ever since Lord Thou and Falor has left, a lot of the control that they've had over the city has been lost. And even though these are a guard that remain primarily in the keep, tolling, uh, kind of tolling the, the keep's grounds around in the courtyard here, and Outside, I should say, not here. And facilitating the service of thy lord, protection of this place. There hasn't been a whole lot of cohesiveness in the change of perhaps leadership. The paladins are the ones to chime in from their tables, standing up tall, telling them to not fear. That... The husband of the stewardess, the partner, has had breath of new life, and that they are hopeful that the son who has sacrificed themselves will overcome the ailment. They speak from royal, some of the royal silvered guard, the knights that have returned to exchange their watches. They live in the keep primarily, or in the grounds. They speak that there is a, a cocoon of energy that surrounds the Costas Morning Light. That there's something shielding them, similar magic that was used to cure their father of the ailment. That they are suspended. Continue to scurry. We're going to go past the privies into a corridor which extends into the mountain. You're now going to be leaving the keep. Heading into a chamber after an intersection which most likely conver converges to that of the throne room. Begin to head west into the mountain as it billows and builds. The arched overhang drips every so often from water runoff streams that filter into these like gutters, if you will, right? Lower end spaces on either side of the corridor to allow for that drainage. There's gratings there to allow that to go in. This is similar to that of the jail at Fort Frostbeard Sephora. And you're kind of moving against, if you will, the flow. 
and then you're going with it every so often. It's this very changing. Eventually, you're going to come to chamber that has two corridors heading in the direction of north and south. The center point of this is going to be an administration-like desk. It's a small chamber, very tiny, only about 15 by 10. There are shelves with books and other accounts that are inside of a iron barred section of the room, the back left. The desk as it sits in the center point of the room has a person behind it, cloaked and robed with elegance of lesser nobility. A scribe currently working on documents and ledgers. As you look in the northern corridor, only about 15 feet or so, the semi-arch as it moves, sees a large metallic door, well reinforced with thick steel. Your south, the corridor quickly ends at 15 feet as it snakes and moves to a spiraling staircase going deep below. There are two chairs in front of the desk, both weathered old. You stand there for a moment. You can hear steps, boots against the stone of the staircase from the southern corridor, beginning to ring out as two guards with torches holding them come into view. Mount! Working late tonight as they speak to the scribe. Yes, well, as do you have it. Gotta account for the mess. Guards look as they stop at the desk and they look down. Sad to hear what happened. See as they look up. I don't know how we are ever going to recover. Stewardess is going to need to hire several to handle these accounts. We'll need a new jailer. Portabaster. <laughs> Obviously you've lost many from your outfit. Yep. Already had a transfer and it's only been less than a couple days. So I'm wanting to head out to Fort Frostbeard. Enlist the soldiers. Rather take the war than kill them in the defense of their own home. And the shelter of it. Well, as far as I know, after this business is done and curtailed, the stewardess will hire these positions and, well, they'll see to some extra reinforcements. That's all I can promise you. Have a good rest of your night. You as well. Both of you go and roll insight checks. Othala, you might be a little bit iffy on the how does exactly a keep run, you know, or, you know, who position, what's in position, that sort of thing. Istra with a 13, Othala with a 20, both your insights are able to pick up on. This is someone of uh, good stature. Maybe somebody who has abilities to be able to uh, speak in court, give advice to someone who, who rules. The two guard, common. They don't have any standing sorts of clothes on, any relation, but they have sadness. They have despair. They've been hit by something that people have. 
And I think you both can understand what might that actually be. As you look at the Southern Corridor, getting some time through the conversation, also able to see that there is some markings with your perceptions of spiders that suggest blood stains have been cleaned recently. And there's a lightness to the furnishings here. There could be more, or bookshelves, and accents of things upon the walls. And this person on this desk, Israel, you, uh, with your relationship of military, governance, these sort of things, and Othal with your intelligence. This would be someone with the rank of a master of coin. This would be a treasurer, is what their position is. As they noted, there are certain things that need to be filled now. A quartermaster, where the storage of weapons and arms and supplies would go. A jailer, people would be in prison. Among others, those are only ones that were named intentionally to paint a little bit of a picture in your minds. But this person is working late because the outfit that they were working with is dead. So you have a path. You look north and you see that vault door. Pretty sure you can't fit in this little spiders. You can try your chance going south down the staircase where the trail of blood leads. There were like little privies or, or rooms along the way, right? Would, it have, would there have been like some room that was unoccupied to just again tap into the gift and get a general direction? Yeah, I mean, you can stop by the privies before, but. I can tell you right now that even if you used your gift in the privies, you're going into the mountains. The gift is simply going to give you a direction to go that way. Yeah. So you're already in the right place of where your gift acting would give you. And right now there isn't a whole lot of space besides getting into one of the shelves that's inside of the cage. And then like getting yourself perhaps in one of the spaces and begin to channel behind Malcolm here. <laughs> yeah. So you, they don't yeah. see you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. Well, they're busy with their scribing, right? They're, like, writing down a bunch of stuff, like, looking at things. Yeah, but you crackle when you use your mouth. Bro. Yeah. I, I think we should just... Let's, um, we could try this out, yeah. Yeah, let's just follow the blood trail. I already feel... You know what this is. So. <laughs> yeah. If she okay. went down here for that, then might as well we try the same. Okay, so we're going south that way. All right, uh, we're going to win pause, and we're going to come to Kit. I'm also going to advance the time, because the spiders are moving pretty slow, and uh, it takes a bit. So you've been on probably about over an hour now. Kit. It's uh, quite regular. For the jailer in here to begin to make way down the walkway. And now's come the time. Come near the, the hour here. So advancing to two in the morning, you don't know, right? You have a loss of time, but you've been counting the ticks every couple hours. They'll make a little walk down the corridor, just looking through everyone's cells, holding a lantern, torchlight, I should say. Not a lantern. And then you can hear them walking, look in the direction of you. Are you awake? Uh, I mean, they left, so yeah, I would, I would probably be awake, just kind of laying in the bed, staring. <laughs> I told, I told him I'd watch. So they move past, and they turn. Hey, bitch! They walk I'll get up and stand up, walk to the irons, to right the bars. Before they looked into Othello's cell. <laughs> I yeah, I knew. <laughs> We call it a bitch, huh? You're the bitch in there. Look at you. I'll I'll give him the little finger to move closer to get him closer to the uh to the door. And, no, no, no. Look at you. Got fucking at least 150 on me, man. Come on. You'd be able to grab me and shove my head right in those bars. I'd be rolling around, passed unconscious. Shit. We only had one frost card knocked unconscious just there on that chair. So. How about, uh, hmm, what do you think's a fair contest then? 
to determine who the bitch is. I ain't getting into this. I got a position. You see as they turn. Don't you walk away from me. They stop. You want to make an intimidation check? I will. Okay. Intimidation? Oh, boy. I should be better at this. You try your best, as you may, but they stop and they look with all his cell holding the torchlight. As soon as he turns away after the intimidation check, I'll use my ghost step tattoo to go through the bars. Okay. You use the ghost step tattoo, turning into ethereal form behind the bars. You see as they... Holy shit. They go reach in their pocket for a botsu whistle to start blowing it to call an alarm. What do you do? You should have somebody look into that. And I'll go back into the cell. Okay. You're not going to do anything to him? You're just going to scare the shit out of him? Pretty much. All right. It's easy to grab the whistle. They look in. They turn and look at you. Whoa, what the fuck? And then you just kind of walk back in as a ghost. <laughs> they hold the whistle. I'm going to go and roll another check. I'm just curious. Okay. Maybe you should go get somebody. Like the commander. Come see what happened. They begin to blow it. Or maybe you get fired. As they blow it, they are running out. As they begin to run, opening the door. You see him here in the stairwell. Oh, my prison of escape! Prison of escape! There's a fucking ghost down here! I need help! I need some help, please! Begin to cry outwards. Sure enough, guard begin to fill down, passing in. And eventually, after the minutes pass by, as they investigate the cells, opening them, the watch commander, Regular Uku, walks down. Guard moving about in a huff puffed manner. Eventually, sorry, uh, inevitably, you're going to hear bells toll, alarming the city. Watch commander looks directly at you. Problems again. Yep. Well, you know where I am when you want to ask for my help and apologize. Aaron said that you're a fucking ghost, huh? How'd you manage that? That that ghost tattoo should be done by now. Yeah. So I will reach my hand and grab onto the bar. Maybe you should hire some guards with hmm, I don't know. A little more uh hmm, gumption, willpower. Uh basically he's a bitch. Let's just be honest. Your bells are ringing in, Commander. <sighs> the bells are ringing because your companions have escaped. And they've gave a shit disguise with these. You see as he grabs both of the kids and holds them. <laughs> 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 <I'll stick What? laughs> the fucking spider face. What in the <laughs> hell? I know. So you're... What guard? the fuck escape. is this? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. To be honest with you, if they did escape, I would expect more out of them than that. Like, You're telling me crap. that they can use magic without any source of conduit. They have this mischievous guile and intelligence, and you can turn into a fucking ghost whenever you want. And they make these shit little mannequins as a disguise. Roll into the ground. I, <laughs> Commander, I, I've been here the whole time yes, in my bed. Yes, you have. Vlogging like, is in order. Check punishment. the door. Check the door. 
If your friends don't come back, put themselves in the cell. By first light, I will have you flogged in the courtyard. Oh. Personally. You know, I am so tired of your empty threats. Empty? That's not even a threat. I'm just, I'm telling you I'm going to do it. It will happen. Let me ask, how are things going out there in the town right now? How's we'll your guard force doing? With you. You had a deal oh. you could have taken. You could have been long gone away from here. Back on the path. I'm glad you didn't take that deal. I'm glad I didn't take the deal too, because now I get to watch how inept you are at your job. How do you still you. have this job, by the way? I will not take insults from the likes of you. I feel strongly that in a different time, I hated you. And in this one, I still hate you. <laughs> I'm broken the commander in two campaigns. <laughs> hate this guy honestly i think it's because dustin is a military you know you're building this is like one of the most inept type positions that you've seen you know, like just not do his job <laughs> they were escaping left yeah, and right. yeah yeah so so seriously though commander is the uh is tolly still around is she causing havoc no have you guys found a cure for costas have you done anything that's over not the last my couple position. of days I'm not arguing with this, right? I must go. The morning, I swear it. See as they walk away. I didn't even know they were gone. A frogging it with me. Oh, once again, empty threats. I really expected all the attention to stay on me. I didn't expect them to go in all the cells. That was funny though. We we are That's hilarious. amazing <laughs> things and we made the worst dummies. <laughs> Just one had a smiley face on it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so you begin to go down the corridor heading south as you do pitter pattering on your feet, you eventually find the spiraling staircase. As it is, it's going to spiral one rot kind of rotation, right? It comes back around underneath itself, and you're entered into another court corridor that's aligned with chambers that are on the left and right as the corridor continues. It is going to be backed into a wall, and then there's going to be a T-junction which heads in the direction of west and east. So further, as a labyrinth, if you will, begins to form, or a dungeon begins to form here. The rooms that you see on either side are going to be holding cells, not for prisoners per se, but it seems for goods and inspections of things to try to parse through them and see what needs to be put where. There are also signage that you're now interacting with as you go into the dungeon here. The, the T interval is pointing in the direction of, of west, being towards cells, a jail, and pointing in the direction of east, which is referred as a, <clears throat> what's a good way to phrase this? A, it's kind of like a cistern, right? So it's not an aquifer. But it's a sister, so it's a underdwelling where the water is being piped in well. And that makes a lot of sense. You're basically coming back around where the kitchen and dining hall is, right? So where if they're going to retrieve water, if they're going to have things. And it's a closed cistern. So, so commonly in keeps, most keeps, right, the cistern's going to be open to some waterway, right, where you can kind of escape and it's going to be graded. We're in the mountains, so this is probably runoff that's filling the cistern in uh, and that sort of thing. You begin to parse through the holding cells here with these items from many things are mundane, shifting through. You are looking at backpacks, bedrolls, and goods, some of them being very old, as if they've been removed. You eventually are going to find your backpacks, and you will find the items and contents inside of them. There is items that are missing from this. 
not all your things are here. <clears throat> For this, it's better to list the things that aren't here. <clears throat> Anything that resembles magic is not going to be in this repertoire. The Staff of Power will not be here. The Tome of Clear Thought will not be here. The Arcane Grimoire plus two will not be here. Running through. For intents and purposes, are you trying to find Costas' items too? Yeah, we try to find everybody's. Okay. Mm -hmm. Costas isn't here. And the items of Kit will also be. So. For the items, again, to reference this for the betterment of you all, I'm just going to create a list in the chat here. So that's for you, Othala. And that's for you, Estriel. Okay. So Staffs sure no and books. Mm. But your weapons are in here. So imagine that they're not trying to take and put away anything that is valuable. Because some of these things are priceless, right? There's extreme value in some of and they're within iron barred thick gates that are locked. So you have to have a key to get in here. But you're spiders, right? So you're able to kind of come in, get in. Imagine this is the same place that Tolly, on their way out, was able to get their stuff. And a lot of the items, as you rummage through, some of them have already been rummaged in. What has been removed is the items that you could imagine that need to be studied more, because they simply did not know. So an arcane grimoire is this leather-bound book. It has the spell casting. It's a spell casting focus uh, for the wizard spells. It's also used as a spell book, right? Yep. So they are looking most likely through this to see what capabilities of magic you had to understand what you could do. And they just kept it away. They just haven't put it back. Because this is the place where you take it elsewhere. And where else would it go from here? Right? We don't know. Tumble Clear Thought being the same thing. And then the Staff of Power inscribed with those runes as before. Being that metal rod. Just didn't know. For the remainder of it, a gemmed amulet or a nice looking ring, a mantle or a cloak, a robe, right? They could be magical, and they could assume so, but outside of reach of anybody that would try to get them, except for you guys. And so those are all going to be in here. They're more than welcome to equip all of those items in your inventory now, except for those that are listed. And as far as the items of Costas and Kit are concerned, those, none of which, have any pertaining to the arcade magics. All right. So at least oh. Athala can do some casting now, right? Yeah, I can at least cast. Um, also, so would they, they took my staff of power, but since I still have the bag of holding, um, everything else in the bag of holding is there? Like the other staff, the staff. Yeah, they could not loot anything. If you have, if any of these items are a bag of holding, they can't loot anything from the bag of holding. 
they have to know what's in a bag of holding to loot it from the bag of holding. Okay. And I and believe they did, these... They did th see me put the Staff of Power in it, yeah. Yeah, they saw you put the Staff of Power in it, I believe. So they know yeah. that was in there. I don't know about the Tome of Clear Thought. If you put that in the bag of holding, then that would not be in the list. So that's... I was not clear okay. on that, of what's in it or not. Okay. I don't know. So... Um, no, the, the, the Tome of Clear Thought would have been in my re regular bag, because yeah. I had finished reading it, but it's still in my person. Okay, so yeah. They would have taken it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. okay, let's fire off another gift, searching specifically for a spell book. Okay. Arcane Grimoire. Begin to power it off. Trying to feel for it. it. Seems as though your gift is having difficulty. Mm. You have a presence of feeling that you're close, maybe within the keep, but there's protections here. And your gift is having, now you've used it so many times, you'll understand when something is foggy, something is generalized where it should be specific. I'm going to have you roll an intelligence check. A 20. What you're able to figure out here, noting that Empyrean College Mage, that 8th level spell that they cast, someone of very high rank, you're unfamiliar with what their posting would be, especially with the fall of the Elder. But their organization, they could even be rivaling that of an Archmage. If anybody was to have that Arcane Grimoire to study it, it would be them. And as a visitor, and as someone with prestige, they would have been kept in the eastern wing, second floor, within the prize protected rooms of the delegates and emissaries of Farley Wing. You could probably surmise that they would have uh, the other items as well to study. Maybe. Yeah, they're, they're the ones keeping it to study. They're also ones capable of using anti divination magic. Yep. Well, would let Othala know. Right, that's our next stop. Um, so we're going to go... Do you want to go grab your book and the other items? or that you Yes. Okay. <laughs> Both of you go ahead and make perception checks. That's true. With the looting, you're getting caught away. Put the items to you. It's taking time. After an allotment of 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so passes by, you can hear the hefty steps of boots that begin to come cascading down the staircase, as well as to the T-junction from the west corridor that leads to that from that jail. As that's happening, you can hear the sounds of shouting and commotion. Either time. Get back in the spiders. Yep. You change back into spiders, hiding yourself in the garments of clothes and these things that are kept for the holding of transfer of prisons, prisoners into the safety and security, uh, into the security of the jail underneath floor keep. The guard that begin to work down stomping on the steps, stomping on the stone of their steps as they begin to move. The halberds, the floor lag as it adorns at the base tip of their blades. They are called to arms as they run into the ones in the T-junction. We receive sending. What is it? Prisoners have escaped. Check the cells, every which one of them. See if they've made way. How would they be here? Just do it. It's what we're commanded. We must ascertain every location of every prisoner in the city. Right now. Go. Turns around. As they look through. Pick this up from Malcolm. Here, you take this. Oh, what am I supposed to do? I don't know, Reggie. Look through the items. See if anything's missing. It's what the assassin did. It took a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> Just run through it. Got you lot, Reggie. stay at the junction. You, stay at the stairs. The rest with me. We're going up. Walk off. Reggie flips through 
manifest of different papers. Um, okay. All right. I'm going to have you both roll a d6, please. As I said, six of these chambers. Roll d6. All right. Uh, average here. <clears throat> Bring it to a three. You're in the third room. Go ahead and roll a d2, please. It actually says slash r1d2. I'll give it to you. Wow, that's great. Try it again. One more time, y'all. Take it back now, y'all. Oh, Istril. Yeah, Istril rolled it. Not you. Okay, that's fine. We'll go with the two. That's fine. It's for flair. Role play only. Two. Say it's the right. Okay. Third chamber on the right. From the staircase. That's where you all are at. Okay. Okay. So, we can look in the rooms. They're not starting with yours as we begin to cycle through. They're going to be referred to as a six chamber. We'll call them the left. I won't roll right for the D2. It doesn't make much sense. They're beginning to look and scavenge through the chamber, which is opposite you. That's the one they're starting with. You see as they reach into some keys, as they begin to unlock it, handed to by the Master of Arms here, who's in charge of defense of the keep, someone that is a very similar position to the Watch Commander, they are beginning to unlock the gate. As they do this, swing it open, they begin to come in, scavenge, and look through the items. Get to this point, you all have to decide what you're going to do. Keeps um, on alert. Something has happened, most likely you know. Yeah, we've yeah. Um, so I can still spell now. I can actually cast, um, and I can still cast as a spider. Um, gonna walk up to Israel, and since they're not checking our room and they're a little far away, I'm just gonna grab her, hmm. uh, and we're gonna dimension door back. Um, where would that be? Because I already heard the guards are posted on the stairs and everything. Um. Where would be an area that I think we could teleport to without us seeing? Would we have seen an area like a crate, barrels, um, a shelf, something like uh, that I, I would know where to teleport us at in a hiding spot? So don't make a scene. The dining hall is a large open area. There is a, an exit out to the courtyard, but it remains to be seen if that would be locked down now. They could be shutting all the entrances and exits. We need to lock them and... Uh, it's difficult. You know there's places to hide. You saw plenty of barrels and crates inside the kitchen as well. Just you just don't know what's going to be locked and what's not. Yeah. But they keep on high alert. I mean, from 500 feet, would we, would I guesstimate that we'd be in the courtyard or? Oh yeah, for sure. Go anywhere. Just above you. As I said, you're kind of underneath everything, right? In the mountainside though, so we've kind of been off, Jason. And you've definitely not gone. 500 feet or so into the mountains. Okay. Um, but we still want to stay inside to get Israel's items. So, all right. If we've seen barrels or anything inside the cafeteria, someplace, uh, like a little corner, open a little portal I'm into the cafeteria. <laughs> it's fantastic. Into the dining hall. Yeah. So, that's where I'm, uh, I'm just going to dimension door that way. Okay. Dimension door that way, come into the dining hall. We'll say you're, uh, you can even do the privy if you wanted to. It's a nice place to hide out. Uh, but mm -hmm. we'll kind of call it towards some shelving units, known usually as like a wet bar that exists in the direction of the kitchen, base wall into the dining hall. Plenty of places and bottles to hide and other shelving units and things of supplies and various cutlery and plates and things that they're using to dine out for these people. You're able to get yourself dimension door in there. Greenish sphere <laughs> emanates through. And as you begin to channel that magic, you see as Reggie turns around. What was that? And then you disappear. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no one believes him. No one believes him. There's something in there, I swear! <laughs> Shut up, Reggie. Ah! Okay, though, so you appear on the shelf unit. You can see that they're on high alert. The kitchen staff is being cleared out at this point from the kitchens. They're beginning to 
pull them into the dining hall, getting them at the banquet table sat down, getting them accounted for. You have the door that is open, that is shut, the same one you entered in from. There is another door that leads out of the kitchen into the open of that walkway, heading in the direction of the main entrance of the keep. But that is shut as well. So they're being to shut those doors, they are locking them, sectioning off areas. There is a lack of garden here, actually. There's many more that were here when you're uh, entering in. There's only going to be six guard currently in here. One of which has been kind of going through the names from their affiliation and familiarity with the staff. And as they do that, and you watch from afar, in some distance relevant to be about 30, 40 feet, they stop, make the way to the doors, they put themselves on notice. Each of the three. Remember, there's a staircase leading up. You have yet to see that, because where you're at, it's kind of above you, that balcony, right? So you can't really see that entrance in from the second floor. What might be happening? But your auditory, you could hear sounds of steps against the stone, suggesting there's more in that corridor above you. And also for the fact that the most defenses of the keeper on the third, fourth floor probably a way to get up there from there. That could be where they're coming down from or going up to. Well, we okay. need to get to the third floor. <laughs> yeah, we have to get to those stairs. Um, are we... So is the dining hall like a enclosed room or... It's an enclosed space able... now. Okay, so but there's is a the stair... door like a gap or anything? Yeah, there's gaps. It was only the vault door down by the treasure on the north side. That That's the door that you were pretty sure you could not get into. Um, but most of these doors are going to have openings and spaces that a tiny sized creature, especially a spider, is able to get up. So you could get back out to the courtyard. You can go out to the kitchen, get to the courtyard that way through the door. You might be able to go into the underdwelling, into the well system. That also would go to the cistern underneath where you were. Um, you could head to your right, scurry across, past where all the kitchen staff come and go in from their kitchen to the dining hall, go up the staircase up to the balcony. Yeah, I think that's actually the best idea. Yeah. We mm -hmm. set some guards okay. so we can go to the kitchen. So you scurry yourself across going through the staircase. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and both of you make stealth checks. Where a spider, uh, I think the spider has better <laughs> stealth than me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, a regular little spider there uh, that you could possibly be tiny sized. Oh, uh, their wow. stealth is a plus four. Damn. I'm going to. I'm going to chrono shift the roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Othala goes gonna first, get coming across. You see as they phase back in time, then tries again. <laughs> as they scurry the That's a 15. <laughs> as they're going across. You're able then to get to the staircase. It is leading up, to the right, back up, not really spiraling, squared off more like. Then comes up to the balcony. Not very high up. And the overhang reaches around. Could serve as a, a good place, auxiliary place to seat people if the dining hall comes to impact. begin to make way down the courtyard. Now there's not much here. This courtyard on the second floor is going to have rooms that are going to go face outwards and their windows face outwards, reaching to the air. Those windows are going to be slightly glass paned and metal reinforced. They can, however, be opened. None of these rooms will have balconies. In fact, none of the rooms in the keeps have balconies. That's a safety reason. The rooms are common. And some of the corridors are going to lead in to even smaller, tight rooms, you know, different things. So you imagine this would be a servants that need a, a place to stay. Their lodging gets thick. There could be some guards staying here. In fact, you could hear sounds of commotion happening in the rooms as things are getting going. It could also be for visitors that just don't have the pedigree or at least auxiliary place for those who do have pedigree to stay. 
In total, you count over two dozen worth of rooms along this corridor, and also there's smaller uh, corridors that lead in the direction of Heading, continuing further as you go. You're going to pass by kind of a circularized room that fits into the cornice piece, kind of the corner of the keep. You're very close to the gatehouse now. And to this point, you probably can go down, which is going to reach in the direction of the courtyard. Or you can go up to the towers, up to the wall segment of the third floor that wraps around. But there's no other path that continues to wrap continuously on the second floor. So you're going to have to get up if you want to kind of take this route to wrap and continue around. You're going to have to get up to the third floor where all the guard or section stationed with their arrow slits. And the towers aren't going to help you, so there's no reason to go up there. There's a path you could descend down. Getting to the first floor, seeing if there, again, is a way into the courtyard from there. Or you might be able to proceed towards that large, common entry chamber, which is very open. So, gonna have a choice here. There is a large amount of commotion, large amount of people moving about. You can hear them. From whence you came, holding torchlights as they're making way, some coming closer to you, darting in the crevices. At this point, I know what you're after. Okay. You want the Staff of Power, you want the Arcane Grimoire, you want the Tome of Clear Thought. Am I correct? Yep. Yep. So. We're going to go ahead and cut to the chase of the shenanigans. I went ahead and did some private rolls that are completely blind, so you shouldn't see any dice come See if by chance anybody's going to stumble upon you in their patrols and, and whatnot. What you're going to do is you're going to access the guard's defenses, getting onto the third floor, running through the gatehouse at that point coming down in the direction of the eastern wing, which has a path to the Lord's chamber, to the private dining, and eventually gets into the throne chamber itself, that large throne hall, <coughs> noting there's doors and other paths from that space they go. You're being mindful of these chambers. And you're pushing your way in, looking, looking, and looking. Eventually, you're going to find the chamber that this wizard is staying at. Notable by the accents of potion making, glassware pitched, and other sorts of delicate instruments balanced on various tables of their chamber. You look and you listen to see if you hear a mage, this wizard, the same one that you saw that bypassed your defenses in the standoff next to the mountainside pub. Don't. It's an eyebrow, it's little spiders, and you continue in. Both of you roll investigation checks. <clears throat> With all up, as you skirt in, you're looking at you see in a wardrobe adjacent to a clerical desk, the back left corner opposite of where this immaculate, beautiful mahogany bed is positioned. A slight little platform that leads with a couple chests to the nape of those drawers. You 
you're going to make way for that wardrobe. Slowly, as you open it. As you stop, as your little spider leg begins to scurry itself in. Stop. Israel, you, scanning, moving through things, go to the bookshelf. Not next to the wardrobe itself, but it is on a flank of either side of the window of this room, behind the clerical desk. Passing through the volumes, you can see now as you turn your attention to Stroll's a spider that there is a large chest underneath the desk that seems to have a tumbler-like lock upon it. You begin to make way for that. While you stopped at the wardrobe, something catches your eye. Make an arcana check. <laughs> Plus 16. Fantastic. Yeah, quite comical. <laughs> There's protection on this wardrobe. Is it an alarm or like an arcane lock? When you passed into it, the door itself did not kind of move. You kind of moved your little spider leg against it and kind of gained a little bit of a crevice to continue in. When you did that, the door itself didn't want to budge and want to move. You believe the wardrobe is locked by some magical means. There's no keyhole upon it. And inside, in the darkness of this wardrobe, with many robes of immaculate beauty, is the Staff of Power, leaning in the back right, stashed away and locked for safekeeping. going to I'm going to dispel the wardrobe okay <clears throat> right you dispel the lock upon the wardrobe you then in your regular form, because you can't take the staff power without being in your regular form. Mm -hmm. You then open the wardrobe and grab the staff, holding it into your hand. I'm good. Is the book there as well, or is it just the staff in there? Just the staff. Okay. I'll quickly shift back into the spider, see what Israel's at. Okay. It's really come across to a chest here. It has a tumbler-like lock upon it. Turn dial that needs to be a set amount of numbers to be able to open it. Unless you want to bash it open. Yeah, I, I don't think this guy's going to leave a paper with a passcode on top of the desk. So, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm just going to take the hilt of a sword and try to bash it. Yeah. Okay, take the sword and you go to bash it. Go ahead and make a strength check. Thirteen. Crack into it. it kind of rings a little bit. Lock jiggles. You strike it to try to pop the lock open. It doesn't work. A little help, Othala. Can I try to guess the combination? You can make a Thieves Tools roll. So this would be a flat dex check if that's what you wish. It could also be intelligence based. You can make a flat intelligence check if you wish, because both these tools can be interpreted as such. I'm proficient at these tools. The chest is quite large. It's not. It's too large for a bag of holding, but it's not unfeasible. You couldn't take it out of here. Okay. Your chain shape, though, is the problem. You can't actually have the chest and then a suit and spider. Is one of the backpacks that we have, like kits or costuses, empty enough to fit the chest in it? Right. Chest is just too big. Okay. Oh, deep still. Well, Hothala, you could be a rogue in the making. Make way <laughs> over to the Tumblr lock. Maybe. And to put your ear, if you will, to the lock itself. As you begin to hear, as you click down to the Tumblr, the little springs, 
and eventually it clicks. You open the chest, and inside you find the Arcane Grimoire plus two. And you find the Tome of Clear Thought inside of the chest in the place. There's also other documents in here. You have a brief moment to scan them before a whirling effect begins to conjure at the center point of the room next to the desk. What do you do? I'm sorry, you said that energy started to whirl? Conjured. The air itself is swirling around a point in the middle of this of the space. I once me and Ishro grab the books, um, or she grabs the books, I'll grab her again. Oh, we're in human form. Mm-hmm. Oh. I think we should just turn back into spiders and hide. Because I think teleporting might be bad. We give it a try. Uh, they're going to know where somebody's here. Ooh, but if we get into the courtyard with just us, it's going to be bad. Is there, wait, is there a window in here that we could try and sneak out of as spiders? Or There's a window. You haven't checked to see if it could be open. The glass pan. Oh, it's closed. Closed. Okay. It's closed right now. You can try to see if it opens. It's in between, right behind you. It's right behind the desk, in between, right between the bookshelves. You're very close to this. Relevant about 10 10 feet right now to the window. All right. Yeah, let's go. Let's just see if it opens real quick. Run run to the window. (laughs) You run to the window, and you can see a little hinge on the window as human form. You can unlock it, and you swing it open. It's very small. It's not big enough for your size. You have to be tiny to be able to get out of this. You open it. And as that happens, teleportation begins to emerge. It is the Imperial College Mage on the opposite side of the desk. As they come in, teleporting in, holding a quarter staff with a ruby like pommel, the spear of it. It kind of holds itself, and you see as they're conjured around, they look, and they see both of you having the window open. And they stare at you. What do you both do? Listen, we don't need to fight here. Just let us go. This is for a good cause. I promise you, we're not trying to escape. These, they lower themselves down. And a slight little head nod. In times like these, it is best for things to go pleasant. My allegiance is not to the stewardess. If I'm to let you leave unharmed, I do want one piece of it. You want some of our collection? While I can see from the studies that you are a very powerful wizard. Your skill is beginning to unmatch mine. That's a challenge with the two of you versus me. I'm really expelled at the present moment. Given the hour, I'm in due charge of certain warding. Cathedral. A lot of the preparations for the day have been tailored to suit me. For a duel of wizardry, I'm a sparse to tell you the truth. But I will not challenge you for what I believe to be the precious artifact of the Tome of the Clear Thought. How often did you chance by it? Find No. 
did you believe that it was a gift from being not from this world? No. I don't believe I would. There's too many things you could lie about. It needs to be something more real than from far away, a distant world, a plane of existence, uncovered, brought it here. No, I need more than that. You know how this goes. It's like a little itch you can't scratch. Just the knowledge of it. Just my curiosities get the better of me. It's very rare places in this world that have been untouched. What tome, dungeon, were you able to ravage to plunder such treasures? Okay. Above table, right? So mm -hmm. I'm definitely not telling her about Felgum. Oh yeah. <laughs> so right. um You're gonna have to deceive, I mean, you're gonna have to figure mm -hmm. it out. I'm going to explain basically what happened. I forgot what, what type of being that was that was giving us the books. Um but I'm going to explain that type of being and say that we met them in that dwarven dungeon. Oh, no, that's a bad dungeon, too. That's stressful. Um, <laughs> Tinkerer's shop. Uh, we, we were there. Where? The, the Tinkerer's place. Mm, true, true. Yeah. Um, that there was... I'll explain that, that there was a congruence and there was a being there. And that's how I acquired the Tome of Clear Thought. Yeah, there was, there was a weird being that was in Aluda when we were trying to stop the Tinkerer. I acquired the Tome there. It wasn't a dungeon. It was a lot there, a lot of research. I see. That will suffice. Well, glad we came to an agreement. As was we promised. Did. And if we do cross paths again, I hope it's on better terms. It entirely depends on you. You have not dealt me violence. And I will not do the same for you. After all, it seems, by all accounts, that you are merely trying to achieve, retrieve the items that you had lost, which are rightfully yours. You've left my items. I thank you. Well, I'm grateful that we understand each other now. Of course. If you don't mind, <clears throat> they reach to the desk and they pull off a ink bottle. They move their hands over it. throw it behind them as it cracks down to the ground it begins to spill this reddish ink now a vibrance of color begins to soak into the material can't make it look like I just simply let you go hmm. we send out a cantrip spell Z in the direction of the wardrobe splintering and shrapneling the wood into their robes roll their eyes slightly And at this point, I need both of you to roll insights. As you begin to change into what? I think we should be birds from this yeah. point. Back into pigeons, yeah. Yeah, um, we have to find Costas. That's our next objective. Yep. Okay. 
It's changing into pigeons as you begin to fly out of the window. Your insight eludes you that they are eerily too good at setting a scene. They disguise it. Huh. Oh. Interesting. And that there might have been an ulterior motive. Go. Didn't quite catch the name. You didn't spend any time investigating any of the documents, nor did you look at any of the books and the authors. Still time later on to try to see you potentially this name of the Imperial College Manger. But... Yep. Be right back. They were an undercover night's nice kiss. Well, they teleported it. I mean, <laughs> that you saw the at magic was actually yeah. tested. So <laughs> yeah. What was what was her race? Uh, they were a half elf. And did not have a pale complexion. It was more sun, if you had to draw an elfish ancestor. Okay. All right, Lucas, you still here? I'm still here. Yep. Although I'll admit, I kind of. Yeah. Lots of time have happened here, trying to get you all involved and get you roped in from these shenanigans here. We're getting you your toward, speech ready. Getting towards the end of our time. Gostas Warden. With your friends as pigeons flying in the direction of the Sun Tree Cathedral, changing themselves into spiders and now attempting to perform their infiltration. The cocoon that barrels around you as it sprinkles and cackles. For you, time has not elapsed at all. You've been rather unconscious. It seems you feel in this moment that you are tethered between two places. And something holds you here. Something otherworldly. As it keeps you in this space. It seems... As you feel inside that this gift that you have been given has motives to ensure your survival, using the well of power that lies inside of you, fractal, gone. This venom, it consumes your soul. But how can you consume a soul that is so powerful and so protected? A battle between gods. The spider venom as it's used from this goddess, Night's Kiss. A creature that seems to be born of a god, maybe lesser forsaken, we don't know. We can put parallels that this has been born from the god's magic, at least. And you were given not only this gift, but also this never aging, seeming to be resistant away from the wakes and the onslaught of time. But that's just quite it. That's what this venom requires, is time. Eat away at your soul it requires to be able to power through. Try to feast upon it until there's nothing left. Just simply can't get at yours. It's just not able. So while this is happening, and while you are cocooned in this 
state of unconsciousness. You are very much in a fight for your life. But it's a fight that you're not fighting yourself. Not alone anymore. You're aided by what lies inside of you and your gift. And it's putting you in a stasis of what swings it all the way through as you lie on the bed. And the little spiders come pitter-pattering into the room here as they're searching diligently. Standing is your father with your mother, the high sunbringer is in the room, tending kind of around you with sensors and other things, providing incense and holy light. Your father, mother holding each other, your father crying, your mother not. The two spiders running closer to you as a cocoon. A large, bright, radiant light begins to emanate from your chest. As now, not only is it refracted with power inside of you, but also and the gift of the old one, Jeffrey. But also, the blessing of your God. As time passes for you little spiders and you pigeons, we're getting to the hours of the morning as the sun begins to rise, as it cascades through that same point. Past this morning light, your oath, has been unbroken. I literally never felt the effects of that. Wow. Well, that's simply because you didn't cast any magic ever. But if you tried, you would not have had anything. <laughs> you just were in prison the whole time. <laughs> that's one way to wait it out. <laughs> that's one way to wait it out. I mean, you're serving a self penance. You could have shape changed and left at any point. And as that light radiates from you, uh, the morning light that emanates from you to the light that the sun rises in the air, you see as your mother lets go of your father, your father begins to run towards your side. As you feel greatly fatigued, you feel like you fought an army, a war. And your father looks towards you. My boy. My boy. You live to sculpt another day? I'm so glad that you're safe. Begins to comb and pet your hair as you lay in the bed. I am trying to swat his hand away. Walks to the other side. You swat. Don't mind me, boy. Let me have this. Uh, Watching you in these waking hours has been torture. All day yesterday. Just couldn't take it. Gave your life for me. Brother now on the other side of the bed places their hand upon yours. And you see in your mother's eyes a slight tear that begins to build, falling down. A single tear. You have regained your divine spark. The sun god has blessed you. What magic that overcame this for you? Don't know. And I won't ask questions. I'm just glad that you're here. And you're back with us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the two spiders I, I, I... in the room. <clears throat> you stare. You see a nearby cleric preparing some towels help wipe the sweat and get Costas at the ready. Turn and they look in your general direction. Squint at you. Damn, are those brown recluse? 
<laughs> Go ahead, Cost. Yeah, uh, I'm probably going to fall over in a second. That's just. <laughs> Hush down. Cost Don't is... move. Dad speaks. Don't move, please. Just lay here. You'll be all right. Yeah, Cassius lies down and, like, all his muscles just stop working. <laughs> just. It's okay. Your dad begins to sing a small song as they did when you were a boy, ushering you to rest. Your mother looks in the direction of your father. They kneel down, both of them on the other side of your bed, as you lay there, slightly half unconscious. The ordeal is now over. What are you two doing as spiders? Uh, I think once it looks like Costas is okay, his trail's good to leave. <laughs> yeah, if a spider could smile, <laughs> that's what old Dala does, you know, a little smirk. And then, uh, under his breath, he just, uh, just, thank you, Caleb. Sleeps. So you both leave. Better pad of your steps into the corridor. Just Scar Paladin stands walking in the direction of the door, the helmet off. Two guards on the other side. Sees you stare at them. They reach at a small pouch in the back left of their hip. They pull out an apple, taking a bite. Look towards the guards. Motioning the head. Guards, look. Sounds like good news. Paladin just shakes. Takes another bite. Walks back from which they came. If you think that's not important, it's always, it always is. All right. The hours pass by here. You two spiders, you're hiding out somewhere. You're trying to go back to Kit. Yeah, I, I think we would, say, yeah, would at least bring up, yeah, let's get close enough to the fort that we were originally wait a minute, wait a minute. in. Above table for a second to totally eat yeah. apples. Huh? To totally eat apples above table for a second. <laughs> Did Tali eat apples? No. Tali yeah. did not eat apples. But I... there is another character okay. this party has Shit. encountered a long time ago that did. Shit. No, who was the shape changer? There was someone that ate apples. Fuck. <laughs> that... They weren't a shape changer. Yeah, they weren't. Who was it? Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> apples is... Doesn't it's shake in their head because he knows from another game. And he's like, I, f I figured this one out. They did this. Uh, they always do it. They always do it every game I play. So it's not. It's not. It's not particular. But it's been so long. I highly doubt yeah. you're all gonna get it. So it's been so long. Okay. I don't know why. Yeah. The only one I'm thinking of is is that caravan. The... <gasps> Shit, Stamadar. Stamadar. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I swear it. Uh, he had an apple or... caravan. <laughs> I'm more talking about the one that we was on the caravan and we left their caravan to go, you know, get teleported to the past. I, I'm, that's the only, I don't know why that's coming to mind. But. No, but he, he same, pretended to be an apple farmer. David R. pretended one, to be an apple farmer. The only hint that I'll give you guys is the same one that I'm thinking of. He's in this town all the time. Yeah, no, I don't know. Like, permanently here. That's correct. You did, you, this party did encounter them in here. Yeah, this this city. Thieves guy is he the member? Of the, is he like the leader of the thieves? No. No, nope, you know. encounter them. You spoke with them. Yeah, the whole whole Fuck. whole thing. Happened might have even character. might have even fought with them, depending on how you chose to oh, do oh, it. You fought with them. The bane. Oh, is it the like paladin of bane? 
Oh. <laughs> oh. Paladin in a pain? Wait, but that was we we Did we kill him? We fought him. I'm talking to what wait, no. When you was walked it? in, what were they doing? Yeah, they were eating an apple. The Paladin at Bane was eating an apple. But didn't we kill him though? We killed him. What? Did you? Mm. God, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just yeah. telling you that always the details. Okay. Uh, Heading back in the direction of Fort Frostbeard. Yeah. The spiders. Uh, plan would be to get within five feet, dimension door in to cut kit cell and be like, hey, you ready to go? Let me just say, this watch commander they have here is totally useless, incompetent at his job. One might say, he came in here drunk. Tried to say that I was a ghost. Wonder what would make him think that. I don't know, are, are we free to go now? I wouldn't say that, but we can leave. Process yeah. is okay. Everything seems fine. Um... Well, I think we should guess just mommy message. bailed him out of another mistake. No, I don't know. It more seems like. Did we see what happened before that, or we just caught Costas waking up? You were like skittering underneath. Imagine that there's a lot of Order of the Light cloaks to the things you're kind of moving in this chamber to get in the direction where you can see them. You're spider. You're on a bed. And the cocoon is moving, and that light blinds as it shines outwards, and you're kind of like, oh, shit. And then you kind of get into in, now into view. And as you do come into view, you can see that the parents are already on the side of the bed, and that Costas is talking. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Lady Daria, you know, as much as she did help, I don't know if she helped him out completely. It looked like he might have been fighting and something happened. And uh, she's okay with us getting out of here? Oh, she has no idea that we're not there. Oh. And apparently, it looks like there's been a lot of recent um, skirmishes that have resulted in the death of a lot of guards here. Seems <laughs> like Tali kind of did a number on them. If it was yeah. Tali. Yeah, true. Yeah, I uh, I got that from the watch commander when he came in to talk to me. He uh, he was a little upset. So, hmm. all right. Well, well, let's get out of here. We'll make contact with Joe and go from there. I think we should message um, cost this. Um, or you know somebody there let them know everything seems fine um, things are good not there no, uh, I'm just going to message Costas let him know that we're not in the cells and that we have our stuff and I have that we have his stuff and we're going to look for Joe okay so when you're talking to Kit, are you talking, you dimensioned toward into the Kit cell at this point? And yeah. Talk to him? Okay. As spiders. Mm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that makes okay. sense. Because yeah. there is a lot of guards still yeah. in the jail. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to make sure that oh, you're like there. Yeah. And like you're kind well, of I'm not getting out of here then. Right. Yeah, you are. If we can dimension door you out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. It's your call. You sound sad about that. Did, no, did you I, want to stay here? Like, no, I just don't want to cause trouble. Oh, we've already passed that stage. If there is to be trouble, <laughs> um, I don't know what trouble is. We tried to help, and you see where that got us. Let's... Yeah, let's just get out of here. Yeah. Okay. So spiders, right? Grouped together. Begin to channel that dimension door. The kit that is not a spider. When your sphere grows, and you see the one guard walking with the torch, the same one that saw you as a ghost kit. Stand. <laughs> 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 we begin to scream in terror, frightening. 
and you dimension doorway. Where are you going? Um, probably going towards uh that hideout. Yeah. For now. Okay. The uh, rafters and the ceiling there. Just kind of yeah. getting yourself dimension door in that general direction. Uh, too much distance, I'd imagine here, unless you want to try to like extend it, which it's not really necessary. Probably just get into the alleys and then from there. Yeah. Hightail it in the general direction of the hideout. Uh, upon there, you're actually going to open uh, there. You're trying to find the little spot. And who's the first one climbing up the little stairs? Did you guys give me all my stuff back? Or are you guys still spiders? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, we, yeah. We, we would have yeah, given you stuff back on when we got out. Yeah. Probably grabbing uh, those items, putting them to in the alleyway, right? In the drift, those tight alleyways of the structure of the city. The wind kind of coming down, the soft snow. You're then heading to the four-story structure, right? We know that the yep. top end of that structure has a kind of that wardrobe, right, that they talked about that you're going to kind of pull down. It's going to open that little staircase as it uh, extends down to the attic. I just want to know who's first going up there. I'll go first. Sure. Okay. Actually, you're going to go first. Um, you were kind of a little bit out here. No warning, uh, I'd imagine, except for right on the middle of the staircase as it begins to kind of ring outwards. It, it seems though your weapon might be having difficulty as this is a hostility versus uh, chancing upon. The dagger's drawn. You can hear weaponry. There's four shadowy figures up here. Stand at the ready with your hands on your own hilt. And you see one of them kind of turn the cowl on the collar. Seems to be an eye half closed. The symbol of the Rudlar. Sorry, the uh, Rudkar. Thieves Guild. There is a number of items here as you look around at them very quickly in a scan. Seems they have climbing gear, ropes, other things. They're getting ready to do something. Oh. <laughs> um. I, uh. Who are you? Oh, this is, uh. You see, the mother that turned around. They then turn and they begin to talk again once more. My associates say we might know you. Yeah. No. Say, who are you with? Before this comes to blood. Oh, let's not do that. Um, where, uh, hmm. Well, we expected this out okay, above board. We expected Rudakar to be it, right? This was a Rudakar hideout. Well, yes, it's a Rudakar hideout, so you can expect them to be using it, right? Because this is one of their facilities that they use. Um, out of character, above table. This is what Dirty Joe, remember they paid the Rudakar right. to break yeah. you out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah, literally yeah. getting ready to do something. <laughs> Most likely, the bells started ringing, so they put, <laughs> yep. went to the hideout to hide out for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Um, oh, uh, you know, yeah, we just got done with a short stay over in the keep, and uh, we're yeah. just looking for a place to lie low. I don't know, you with the keep broken out, huh? We've heard some things on the street. Must be the wayward ones. Yeah, you got yeah. it in one. Oh, God. Yeah, that's us. You look familiar. I think Marvin's talked about you in great length. Got some others down there with you? Bring them up. Yeah, yeah. The all three begin to come up. Name's Jameson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Just to uh, so May I ask? All right. What was that? Ask away. No, ask away. What'd you want? What, what exactly? You guys look like you're ready to bolt at a moment's notice. <laughs> well, we lot will fix it to get you out. <laughs> So you got yourselves. You got a nice ah, little friend that yeah. paid a good handsome coin about the Rudy Car to get you out. But it looks like we don't need something such as that now, given you're here and all. Where's the fourth one? It was supposed to be four. He's safe. Right, well, looks like job's done. Didn't even have to get our hands dirty. We've got some rations and supplies in here for food if you want some. Can't say it's nice. Smoked meats, a little bit of uh, 
baguettes. Cheese. Right. Congratulations on the easy payday, then. <laughs> Is there any drink? Of course, we got some ale. Got some uh, sacks of some whiskey if you need it, too. Pulls up the water skins filled with whiskey. I'll just reach hey, out and take it. Hey. Before you do that, Kay, I'll reach out a hand. <laughs> um, we're gracious, and we're going to be very cautious. We've stumbled upon not many. Right, people. right. I'll be fine by me if you want to see if these goods are good for you. I don't mind. Yeah, thank you. And I'll just throw out a detect poison and disease in the area. You don't detect anything as you cast it out. You don't feel any presence with any of the water skins filled with whiskey or the small tankards filled with ale that they have stashed up here tapped. They have smoked meats wrapped in different parchments. They have sourdoughs. They have butters up here. So it's very much like dry foods and storage foods up here. No refrigeration, no way to keep goods right except for salted you know, staples in the pantry. Um, they are, you know, watching and eyeing as you're moving your hand over it. They're eating the same contents that you're currently detecting. So they're eating it's the same food, the same drink, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you've caught them in the early hours here of the morning. Uh, most likely that they've been hiding out here and they slept. So they're kind of arising themselves and eating a breakfast, so to speak, before they're going to discuss the next step. Um, usually in these situations, there's going to be someone who tries to come to them. And they're going to hide out until someone comes to them and they kind of like, you know. and that stands also as truth that they didn't outright kill you or like attack you because they assumed somebody was going to come and rendezvous with them to tell them that the coast is clear, that kind of thing. Um, they might also have magical messaging. We don't know, right? They got a sending stone. These are very common forms. They could also just simply have sending spell scrolls, stuff like this. They have a large amount of bags. They have a large amount of items in here. We just recently got up here. One of the things they're going to say as you're throwing them around, the magic that you've used. <clears throat> say, so wasn't uh, the husband of that stewardess, weren't they poisoned? Yeah. <laughs> kind of funny, humorous, yeah. Chancing upon everything, looking for poisons, and yet one of your own was poor. That's the father, isn't it? One of you? It's one of our companions. Right. You do your research, huh? We try to keep the use of the ground, especially in the city as such. Gotta know what we're up against. And uh, from what we like, what we reckon is... Um, Night's Kiss still in the city, trying to find their ways out. They've got magical means of travel. They ain't going to stay long. I think the thing what happens if this poison affects. The sadistic bastards, if you ask me. Speaking of which, you've had your ears to the ground. Do you know what's been going on with the recent commotions? No. Oh. We are fixing to stash up here, get ourselves ready. Just storage of supplies and whatnot. I'm gonna make the daring try against you all, or sorry, try, daring try to break you all out quite yet. We're gonna wait. Next day or so, a couple more moons and the light was good. Dark shadows and such. We're moving some supplies up here, and the bell started tolling. We decided to stay the night. Thought it'd be best not to chance out, caught up in any of the mess happened in the city. After all, we're looking like shady lot. Could be chanced like we're some Night's Kiss assassins. I'm not going to tell you right now, I'm no assassin. I make quick work of second stories. Repelling down, breaking through a couple windows, elegantly. Locks and picks. Easy enough. Killing someone. Slicing the neck. Stabbing through the kidneys. That ain't for me. None of us are uh, assassins. Well, There's only a prize, prized few positions in the Rukai, actually, that have uh, assassins. Precautions, anyway, so just we'll throw out a detect magic.
throw a detect magic. You notice there is magic coming off of them. Um, you do not sense any illusion magic. Okay, good. I, I knew you were. That's that's what you're <laughs> yeah. looking for. We're the beach yeah. right to the punch. <laughs> yeah. All right then. Well, I don't suppose we'll be staying too long. Probably long enough to meet up with the uh, the friend who hired you. And we're gone. All right. Well. Cheers, mates. Cheers. Um, I'm going to send another message to Costas before it's too late. Okay. Because I have a plan kind of brewing in my head for next session. Um, gonna message Costas. Uh. Oh, Ivory, you feel like it's out. But anyways, um, I'm gonna message Costas. Don't. I don't think you should make your revival known yet i think night's kiss are waiting and trying to see what's happening stay low am i conscious yeah i mean you're like um a good way to say is it's just really tired so you're kind of like resting you know you're kind of asleep but you're not so ascending spell is like hello hello in there and you're like, what the fuck is this? So, how many words do I have to respond back? It's like 10, 20, right? 25. Oh, shit. Okay, you can get it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah, okay. Four. Stay low. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, uh, my God. Keep it breathing. <laughs> then, you just get a few Zs. You just get a few Zs. <laughs> I love how you barely said anything and you got up to like 15, 16 words. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keep it breezy. Keep it breezy. Keep it breezy. All right. Don't worry for that kid. <laughs> All right. So at this point, we definitely, we definitely, uh, uh, a phrase we used here, you know, <clears throat> ran through our ropes. We've done a lot, um, you know, definitely went through this prison escape, getting our items, doing our things here. We've actually ran into a couple characters that uh, through the travels that uh, could stand out as, uh, you know, if we want to go down alternate storylines and try to figure things out. We could, right? There's always layers and layers. Um, I don't know if you'll want to keep going with the assassin thing. You know, this might be, we went through quite a bit as a party here to try to defeat this assassin. Number of sessions at this point. Um, you finally are all at a point where you have your freedoms, you got your items, you got your things, right? I mean, we don't know. They could, again, put a bounty on you, come after you, right? Because you see prison, that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, Costas' dad, Costas himself, are safe. So Costas could be in the green here. I don't know if their mom is going to imprison them in broad daylight after what they did for their father in the eyes of everyone that's there in the cathedral and all the guards and everything. Given how much turmoil you have witnessed in the dining hall in your infiltration of the keep. So as a party, uh, obviously Michael will be here. To, Mikey will be here tomorrow. So we play at two o'clock uh, p.m. PST for our makeup session. You could kind of come maybe out of character on the Discord and get yourself situated. Maybe Mike can chime in and try to figure out uh, if you're going to stay here in the Holy City to continue these shenanigans and try to pursue if there's Night's Kiss left over or pursue these other storylines that have now kind of sprung up noting the apple biting and noting the mage that was very good at hiding details and making something look like something and getting into the politics of what lady daria the bloodied right the stewardess is doing we can go through all of that right if we want to we might even be able to work on absolving ourselves of our crimes here if we're if we're worried about that but as the, se the session today stands we went through a hell of a lot 
We went through a number of hours through theater of mind play, just getting you into the keep, getting your items in these other places. Um, and the end of, the end of that, I just kind of pushed you all through it because it was taking a lot of time. It's just not wanted to waste that at that point. Um, and so for tomorrow, I definitely think you all should talk in Discord and try to see exactly if you want to keep going with shenanigans in the Holy City or if we should just move on at this point and go on. I mean, I will say the Cult of we could go after the Cult of Bane. Duncan cost fallacy, guys. We've already put too much resources into Tully to back out now. I mean, that's it's called a fallacy for a reason. Like you, you, you literally just used yep. it for the opposite of its point. Sunk cost fallacy. Like yeah, we already invested Hook, too much back and out. Sinker, it's guys. The opposite point of the sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> the sunk cost. <laughs> This sunk cost fallacy is that your mind tricks you into thinking that you've already put too much into back out. You can back out at any point. You won't. <laughs> like, you need to reassess. Like, I'm just saying. Oh, no. We already is... promised her that we would find her. Like, Talia's pretty much given up on killing us now from what I get, right? Like, she had the chance. She what? didn't take it. What? Like... They they just told us that that, that um, Night's Kiss still might be here because they fear that she might they may be waiting for something. Okay. Which is your which is to hear that Costas is alive or Costas has, has died, they want to know the result and then to see what their next move Fair is. point. Okay. So here's my idea though. Can we just deal with the bolts? I feel like that'd be so much easier than fucking dealing with Talia. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, like, we're gonna deal with them eventually anyway. Because the thing is either way we're gonna have to deal with the bolts. Like they took the the hit out on us, like we're not gonna leave them alone. But like if we deal with the bolts, we deal with Talia, since they took the hit out on us. And like, also we deal with any other potentially future night ki night's kiss. It's like you know, killing Talia might incite revenge. And like you know, even if it doesn't, they might just keep coming after us since there's still a contract on us. Like, I really just feel the easiest way to do this is just make sure they can't get their money, and maybe make sure we get that money because we get it from their safe. Like you know, it's just we deal with the bolts. I think that's really. At this point, we know so, who they're the person who hired the medicine. So just take that. Like, let me get this right. The re the redemption paladin that just got his powers back is now advocating going and killing somebody or intimidating them and then taking their money. They're a crime organization. I'm not saying we kill them, but I have no problem taking their money. <laughs> get to killing somebody. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, you can kill path. them. Don't don't care which path we. Is this you, Lucas, talking or Costas? <laughs> Let's be honest, Costas did. Costas is he got his oath back. He didn't like swear it again. Like, come on. <laughs> oh like... my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, I well. swear to nothing. He gave me my power. <laughs> Give him an inch, and they take a mile. <laughs> oh my god. god. You're dead! You don't come back! Retcon! 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 Gone! No light in the morning. I so symbolic. The fucking sun was rising. The morning light was coming out of you. Your oath was there. The fucking gift was an act. I just can't. I the the scene that I painted. I went the whole session today. Theater of mining for Laura Keep as two little spiders were spelunking through it, digging through the drawers of treasure. All the while, Kit, i.e. Dustin, hated on the watch commander for a second life. <laughs> <laughs> for the second second session. Fucking second. second campaign. They are absolutely, yeah. The watch commander is not a watch commander. If you didn't if you didn't catch it, guys, yeah. just FYI. The watch commander is a, is a soldier, not a captain of, of a guard. They want to be on the front lines. They wish it, but they're old. They are tired. They're injured. All in all. Very good session. I thought it was great. I tried to move through things the theater mind quickly. I noticed how much detail there was, just where you were going. So I tried at some point. I was trying to get through some things, just moving faster, faster, add some details. Appreciate those who weren't. You were sitting idly by. Obviously, Dustin and Lucas, you're definitely sitting idly by through most of the session here today as the story was unfolding. Just, like I said, understand um, that, you know, when we do those moments right and you kind of pursue through, um, you know, we're trying to tie the story together, trying to get it all wrapped up and, and good to go as best as we can. 
Um, and so I think right now is that we're a really good spot where we have characters together, right? You're going to get Dirty Joe in the mix here together. And then Costas eventually, right? We're going to go through some role play there. Costas, you'll be good to go as well. For session 80, we have uh, 1472 for you, Kit, and then 1283 for everyone else. Also, can I just say that, like, I think the cult of ban does need to be a priority, even if it's not, like, first priority. Like, since there's... We are kind of somewhat aimless right now. And because of that, I do think the fact that the cult of Bane has infiltrated shit should be, like, a goal. So you so know. we had a plan. It was go to go to uh, the tower. The, was it uh, Felgrim? Mm -hmm. And then it was kill the assassin. Mm -hmm. And then it was go to the desert, right? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, there was also the thought of visiting Tresgol. Or going to... Mm. Well, I don't know if we wanted to explore that as well, but uh, the we had the invitation to go to the, you know, primordial. Well, here, here what we, we do is why don't we let mm -hmm. Michael end everything, and then we can, if you guys got time, stay on for like five, ten minutes and talk, yeah. and yeah, yeah, we yeah, can yeah. put it in, in Discord for uh, for Mikey. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you're watching the stream, this much really appreciate it. Uh, a whirlwind of events here as we navigated certain things. We got here. We got through it. We feel good, it seems. Awesome. And check us out tomorrow. Uh, we're playing our makeup session at 2 p.m. PST. Uh, and you all have a good day. So see you later. Bye. Bye. Peace.